Last we left our heroes, you've begun taking action on your plan to destabilize the Crimson Coin operation and bring down the general, and in doing so, gain your freedom from the city of Sigil. You descended into the sewers in hopes of meeting some figures or representatives of the Free League anarchists that are located here in the city, hoping to utilize their skills in guerrilla warfare and explosive expertise. First, you were able to acquire some explosives of your own, courtesy of Chef and Hondo's desire for wanton destruction. But in time, you did meet two figures of the anarchist movement, Phantom and Smiler. This odd pairing, starkly in contrast to Horus, who thus far had been your only point of connection to this group. Um, however, they did come to uh, agree with your ideas and plan. You spoke at length, discussed the merits of the so-called leaders of the city and what to do about the general. As your discussion wore on, a surprising sight caught the attention of your more perceptive crew. One of the lady servants, a Deba melting through the stonework and appearing before you with a projected image warning that the mercy killers were inbound before melting away once more. Immediately after your party began to split in two minds as the anarchists slipped away from the scene. Some of you hoped to flee deeper into the sewers and escape while others hoped for a fight. Both attempts were made as Alana and Boone dove into the sewage and attempted to lift the thick metal grate on one side to free a passage deeper within, however it was made uh, of heavy metal and only budged uh, sparingly under your combined efforts. Meanwhile, five red armor-plated figures entered the room, calling for you to throw down your arms as anarchist scum and, uh, under the arrest of the Mercy Killers' uh, red justiciers. Not having any of that, you fell into the fight with these lawmakers who did not seem to shy away from drawing your blood. The battle was relatively quick, however, sustaining some damage, but dealing significantly more to the justiciers, even turning one into a tiny crimson bunny for the foreseeable future. You began the process of sifting through the effects of these justiciers and lifting some items and armor from them before Horus uh, departed with the plan to seek out Phantom and Smiler, letting them know you survived and what happened and that you will meet them again uh, the following night. As you departed, however, intending to call it a night as it is well after midnight at this point, you instead were met once more by a Deba who showed you the symbol of the Lady of Pain before the world around you began to melt. You plummeted through the city street, landing in a dark void. A sourceless light silhouetted the massive titan-like frame of the Lady of Pain. A halo of blades surrounding a metallic feminine face, unmoving and unreadable. Long, intricate robes, multi, multiple floating strands and sashes that kind of flare out and hang in the air, each as long as a mile. The face itself turns its attention down towards you. And it's like watching a mountain awaken and move, slow and all-encompassing your vision. And she steadily approaches you, watching from the void before you as you're reeling from this moment. A cloud of smoky fog flares white and gray. The clouds before you part and a wall of fog extends as far as you can see left and right. And yet in front of you stands now an iron gate topped by jagged barbs and blades. In the middle of the gate sits a metal seal in the shape of the monstrous face you see above. Right down the middle, it cracks, and the gate creeps open with a squealing grind of metal. Then you watch a Deba drift through towards your group, smoke kicking up in its wake, the gate closing behind with a heavy latch. About 30, 40 feet in front of you, we begin tonight's game. It's very slowly making its way towards you. It's, what do you guys do? The fog is making its way towards us? The Deba is like slowly making its way towards you. Mm -hmm. Currently in your surround, like looking in, the ground is maybe a foot, foot and a half of fog. Like you can't quite see the ground, but there are no anything in sight. This is a black void. You feel purchase on the ground, a solid ground. And now you see this gate and kind of fog wall extending before you. But other than that, you're in void. We're gonna get out of here. We gotta play nice with these Deba things. I know or we we're not. Guy, uh, let's speak. We already fought some things we probably shouldn't have fought tonight. It's that not... guy just melted us and brought us here. I don't think this is the thing you fight. 
Uh, on a side note, uh, do we still have Bunny Guy? Oh God, I forgot about Bunny Guy. Yeah, I've got him right here. Could could we turn him back into a man? Because we could use him as an intermediary when we meet uh, the uh, Lady of Pain. This is not the time to be talking about the Bunny Guy. This fucking <laughs> hovering man coming towards us. I'm just saying, he's a local. He can help. Boone will like step forward, just like put his glaive away around his back. <laughs> And just like have his hands up like this, just trying to be real non-threatening. You can see the the Deba approaching, kind of in this long, kind of gray robe with like red, like a red tabard, um, hands like steepled uh, together, and like only only three fingers, so like two big fingers and like a thumb area, and this like steepled as it just glides towards. You don't see feet, just the robe kind of trailing beneath and the kicking up of fog and it's the two horns and this kind of faint kind of crown of white hair. Uh, it, uh, the big, big eyes, like almost like, like almost egg shaped eyes. Uh, and it slowly drifts towards you, not making any change in facial, like no, no facial changes based on your actions. Um, but you watch as you guys kind of wait and this creature grows close. The Lady of Pain's face, this monstrous figure in the sky, finishes moving and just kind of hovers above. And as soon as she stops and you see like the eyes blink, the Deba's eyes blink. And there's a, a shift in the mouth of the Deba as the shift in the mouth of the lady above. You can see there's a mirror effect and the Deba drifts forward and you hear it begin to speak as it gets within five to ten feet of you. Kind of looks across all of you and says, you stand on the precipice between two worlds. In one world, you depart here stronger, wiser, Incapable of doing what must be done to save this city. You can see both again, the mirror effect of the creature, this monstrous lady of pain above, mouthing these things, but the voice coming through this creature before you. In the other, you wander these mists lost, starving, unable to eat, fighting without a cause. And even when the madness takes you, your torment will persist. These are the words, these are the words of she, whose name you so freely bandy about, whom you claim to be champion for, who holds your fate and future in her hands. Despite your sounds, you have proven to possess great potential, the potential for heroism, the potential to be that which you believe yourselves to be. And it is this potential that may guide you to the heart of this domain. There, should you be worthy enough to survive the journey, you may have audience with the lady and discuss the aid that you find along the way. The more you prove yourselves to be worthy, the more aid you may find. If your potential proves lesser then, then your journey ends. The lady awaits you. Do not disappoint. Thank you. And he just begins drifting down and slipping into the fog beneath. The gate just like kind of gently creaks. And you can see it is now open, presenting a path forward. Listen, I know you need audience with her for get your friend back and for reasons I don't fully know, but I gotta get back to friends of my own. I've been trapped here, had to go against the general. And this is a moment I've been waiting for. This means a lot to me, so let's prove ourselves worthy, all right? I have a feeling if we don't, uh, none of us are going anywhere, let alone back to the city, so. Give it your best. Let's not fuck any of this up. Um, Kyle, the gates, sorry, I might've missed it. Are they like fenced around it or is it just gates? 
there's a massive kind of like classic wrought iron gate and there's kind of an arch of that fog wall you can see it's not a permanent thing it kind of rose up out of the ground but the gates themselves kind of appeared and seem more of like a fixture but there is a, a, a fog like fog arch and then a wall that extends out left and right as far as you can see just perpetually into the distance this gate seems to be the only access point hey uh before we go in here mr blue I don't know you that well, and uh, I had to leave people behind to get here. There was three of us. One of us had to make a sacrifice, and it was me. And uh, I will leave you behind to get back to them. So, Completely understood. All right. <sighs> Let's get this fucking over with. Um... How far can we see past the gate, or is it just immediately? Like, you can't see anything past if we take guys, a few steps forward. You guys are roughly 30 feet, as, but as you begin making your way close to the gate itself, uh, you can see just beyond the gate, there's a, a pathway. Um, you can see towering fog walls extend high above past where you could see from outside, but as soon as you kind of look within the gate, the walls just extend up and up and up. Um, and you can see a 15 foot wide pathway of stone street, much like the streets of the city above, just stretch ahead in a single path right now. You can see about 15 feet of it from the edge of the gate on. You can see about 15 feet before it just kind of becomes vague fog and smoke. It's a general like dim light kind of all about the space, but it's like sourceless. Um, this dull white glow and an uncomfortable silence, like a pressure chamber that bears down on you a little oppressively. When the Deva went away, did the Lady of Pain above go away? Or is this like, she remains kind of still watching? This oh, yeah. present That's looming great. figure over top, towering over this, uh, like a, like a giant over a chessboard. Dope, dope metaphor. Um, who is hurt, by the way? Because I can do some healing before we get into this. I am hurt, so I'm going to heal myself. To remind, you guys did not take a short rest. No. Because you guys no, were we focused on quickly moving. We were taking armor off and shit. Yeah, making a bunny rabbit cage. Ten minutes to gather those uh, pieces. So you guys are still hurt down all spells and items mm -hmm. and any of that kind of jazz and any health that you lost. I didn't look to make sure but you have not completed a long rest and won't be anytime soon. So keep that in mind. Anyone really hurt? I'm below half, so I'm going to heal myself. I haven't taken any damage. Perfect. I'm Mary? only like 20, 20 down, so it's not so bad. I can check Kevin's. I, I'm just pulling Kevin's up here. How are you looking, Brock? Did, did Gordo get hurt? Milkshake? Good, uh, like 98 of 110. Okay, that's great. I Honda's, got hit hard by one of those guys. Honda's 114 of 133, so he's only down 19. Okay. I'm at 62 of 116, so I'm going to... Yeah, you made yourself a bit of a target. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to <laughs> use Lay on Hands, which is really fucking cool. Um, oh, math is so hard, guys. I'll put 62 plus 50. It would get me up to... 112. 112. Uh, let's do it. Okay, so 69. <laughs> nice. Subtract 50. Because this is still the same day we fought the street people, mm -hmm. if you guys recall. So I only got 19 lay on hands dead. Left, not dead. It's an ominous tone. Um, what else was I going to say? Confirm. Heal, 50, great. Yeah, Boone will, um, I guess just, yeah, touch his hands to his like plate and just like a little bit of like jade shimmering will kind of like course through his hand and some of the like scars or cuts and blood on him will start to like close and heal up a bit and he'll just look a little more refreshed. 
we doing this thing? Let's see what this thing is. Um, I know we haven't done this a while, by the way. I am, uh, I'm not sneaky. It's not really my thing. Well, we are. <laughs> Hopefully we can make up for it. It's just, um, we don't even know if we need to be sneaky or what the fuck's gonna happen here, so. Um, Kyle, is it like an oppressive quiet or can we hear anything? Mm, Take a perception check if you want. See what you can hear. Do I have any cool spells? Not very good. Well, it's okay. It's a nine on the dice. It's not excellent. Uh, 16. It is indeed an oppressive silence. It is overbearing as is the lady above. Um, and after that Deba left there there was almost like the echo of the words uh, and then the creak of the gate kind of echoed for a minute you don't hear anything else I'll start moving forward towards it okay yeah I'm just going to keep an eye out on fuck me I guess we should all just keep our heads on a swivel just make sure someone, someone watch behind us. Um, Gord, admittedly, you're usually used to bringing up the rear, and you're pretty good to make sure nothing follows us. Maybe that should be your job. I'll do it. Okay, and everyone else, just be ready for whatever the fuck this is. Um, Remember, this is a test. It doesn't have to be a test with violence. And she said, the more better we do, the more help we get. So I'm guessing us getting a ticket out of Sigil is a steep price. So let's be on our best behavior. If we, um, how much can we see of this road, Kylie? I'm assuming it disappears into fog. Um, are we on it yet or is it ahead of us? I'm, I would, I'm just giving you guys the moment to have everyone at the ready. I would say when you say we cross the gates now, things will change. As of right now, you're standing at the gate. Tight. Okay. So you say otherwise. I'll go second. I don't care who goes first, but Boone, again, can't. <laughs> <laughs> Boone is perception zero and stealth plus one. So like he's not going to be leading it, but he'll find I mean, anything. That you have disadvantage on stealth too. Great. I might have that armor. I'll check, but I might. Oh, did you get mithril, mithril armor? I think that was part of my only two things. Yeah, so I got Mithril. Okay, so not disadvantage, but still. Just straight plus one. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I would if... like a marching order, please. But in, you can keep in mind what you can see. The path is about 15 feet wide, so it's not a five-foot hallway. Mm -hmm. you've, got a, you've got leeway, um, just not a lot at, at this stage. So if you want to go, you could go three abreast if you wanted to. You could go double, entirely up to you. But I do want to know what your marching order. Um, Hondo, what if you and I stick up front? If anything needs to be scattered ahead, one of us can do it. You keep your eyes and ears open, and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna kind of keep eye on ground and looking out for any other paths. Basically, I'm gonna try to go like an investigation route with this. If you want to try perception, because I think your perception's better than mine. Would that help? Why don't we do? Sorry to interrupt. Why don't we do five on a dice? So two strikers out front, Hondo, Mary, Boone could be in the middle, and then Gordon, Mary, sorry, Brawley and Gord could be the rear flanks. Yeah. Sounds good. And then who has the bunny? I really I want to track this for the entire game. Okay, good. <laughs> Let's keep eyes on him. Make a note of that. What's his name? <laughs> Well, what was his name, Kyle? You don't know. <laughs> never found out. You never asked. So you just turned the other thing mind. is, Gord has to keep this concentration for an hour. Oh, yeah. It's done. Has, it's done. You guys. Has it been an hour? Yeah. Kyle, yeah. you said it took an hour to get the armor off, remember? I don't think it was a full hour. No. Because you, you, you backtracked and you wanted to do it quick. It was going to be 10 minutes. Because if you took an hour to do that, you would have taken a short rest. Yeah, we didn't. It's up to you. I don't think it's been a, the full hour yet but like in a couple of minutes like you sp you spent a good 45 minutes picking up armor making your way in and out of the sewer talking like you've got like 10 minutes left before that would be up so hear me out at this he point. was he was a mercy killer m 
K. We can call him Mickey. Do you want to call this <gasps> rabbit Mickey? Mickey. <laughs> um, oh, God. Okay. You guys have then? You could spell it. I'm so sorry to harp on this. You could spell it M E K I. Because, like, Merc. Fuck it. Yeah, let's head in. Let's head in. Uh, Hondo and Mary. Mary, you specifically said you want to do an investigation to see it, to look for like traps or, or troublesome things. And Hondo's going to look more for eye level threats. Was yeah, I'm going to kind of keep an eye out for traps or like any like clues more ground wise to see if like i know this is the like half investigation is kind of half survival but like oh, that's fine. You know, I'm, skid I'm, marks of someone being dragged like anything like that i'm okay with it so this is this is going to work out totally fine mary make an investigation check hondo's going to make a perception check and then ali and gord either one of you can make perception and advantage or you can each roll perception and i'll get boone to roll the last die for so everyone can roll just for fun. Uh, so if Brawley, Gord, and Hondo roll perception, Mary rolls investigation, and Boone just roll a d20. You got it. Gord, what's your perception? Boom. This is dead. pretty good. It's pretty good. I just rolled a twenty. Natural. Ooh. Sick. No, my the... perception is ten, so ten plus ten. Do you want to do it with advantage? Because mine's zero. <laughs> sure. Okay. I mean, I don't know if you can, you can't roll better than 20, but if you get another one. He rolled 20 total. Oh, 20 total. Mm. I rolled a 24 now. Hey. Okay, so that was for rear guard, Hondo. I rolled a 12 and for, you said perception, right? Uh, plus 14, uh, 26. 26, 24, Mary. 28. Okay, and Scott. Team, because it's just the dice, right? Don't just straight anything. dice, yep. no ads. This is just for, just for little old me. For funsies. <laughs> Sixteen. <clears throat> okay, you guys, begin making your way through the gates under this formation, and keeping your eyes and, and ears peeled for anything and all things that you can stumble upon. As you begin making your way in, these stone tiles are surprisingly well kept it's it's similar to when you were walking through the ladies ward uh, up above and the passage is unobscured it is clean and it just keeps extending um you can only see about 15 20 feet roughly ahead of you and as you begin to move for the next couple of minutes past Gord and Allie, you guys can only see about 15 to 20 feet behind you. You seem to be moving and losing sight and gaining only a little bit at a time. This little group of you moving through what seems to be like this kind of fog of war effect. To the left and right, you can you can almost feel more than than actually see the wall. It looks just smoke and and ash and and, uh, and fog but you can feel there's like a physicality to it. You can feel permanence to it. Um, and as you get kind of Mary, you specifically as you're looking to the edges and looking at the stonework itself, you can almost see past the stone floor and see that the fog like continues straight down. It continues up and down as far as you can see before it just becomes a blur of nothing. Um, and still for the next 15-ish minutes, you can see the the lady just watching this whole time. And it is silent with the exception of your shifting movements as you're moving slowly, unsure of what you're going to find. Uh, and in you know, roughly 15 minutes, maybe a little longer, you come up to a, the path kind of continues and you begin to see this, um, the path begin to open and it's no longer just a 15 by 15 foot walkway. It begins to open up into a very small kind of courtyard. Not much bigger, maybe only about 20 feet before you see it end to your left and right. <clears throat> but in the 
just at the peripheral of your 20 foot vision as you begin to cross into this new space, you can see a dark monolith, just this single pillar, just, just drifting out of the fog at about the 20 foot uh, distance from, from your entry, central in this kind of area. Uh, thus far, you can't make out any other details. This is the first thing you see. Does it, how big does it look? Like, is it a big ass statue thing or is it like a person size thing? No, it's, um, it's rounded at the top, um, and stands maybe about seven feet at its height. So at, you know, you, you, you be all of you for the most part, with the exception of Elena being able to like touch the top and almost see over it in some cases, like, it's a normal, it's almost like uh, maybe th three, four feet wide, seven feet tall. Like, it's not oppressive. There's no lights on it or anything like that. It's just a, a dark void. It almost, at first, if your perception wasn't high enough, <clears throat> you'd almost mistake it for a cloaked figure. It has this kind of draped cloaked figure look but because you all rolled so so well you can you can tell at a distance it's unmoving and stone or gem or metal perhaps it's it's uh, inorganic should probably check this shit out no one make two out of game. movements this just reminds me so much of the dark crow maze that we went in and Hondo's just like uh, fucking throwing daggers at statues. It's like grabs a decapitated head and is like puppeting it around. Oh <laughs> Flashbacks. Far, but not that far. <laughs> not that far. So you make your way to the middle to this monolith <clears throat> as a group. Um, yeah, I don't want I don't think we should separate too much here. <laughs> Uh, moving as the five of you, you get close up to it and you can see a little bit more about it. Um, its faces, uh, it is kind of like, a, it's smooth on all sides. Uh, so it's more like a, like a pole and it's smooth on the top, but it is this dark black onyx, possibly gem, possibly like a marble kind of uh, material. There are signs of old gouges and cracks across its across its form, um, but directly kind of right in the face of it as you approach from this direction, you can see the symbol of, a, of an eye that is half closed, um, this half-lidded eye. In the space where the pupil would sit in this kind of depiction, it's been hollowed out. There's about a, you know, a little hollow of about maybe an inch by an inch wide. And as you approach, slumped at its base, you can see there's a skeletal form. It's leaning against, kind of slumped off, but leaning against the monolith. And you can see the, the legs are full skeletal. The hand is kind of falling off to the side and the head is lolling over. You can see it's wearing kind of like a, it looks like a dark cloak, but it's long, kind of withered and torn. You can also tell, because you all have such very high perception. The path continues uh, eastward in the, in the direction you were going. It does continue past this monolith. It also turns south, and obviously you can go back. The path remains back to the west. So you have three directions, but you have this monolith before you. Does the um, skeletal look human? Like just from the skull, like. <clears throat> Are we talking a Deba's skull or a human skull? Any way we can figure that out? You can <clears throat> go ahead and roll medicine if you'd like. Am I good at this? No. Let's do it. <sighs> Almost in that one. It said it's a seven. Looks okay. like a one. Not that good. Seven total, sorry? Yeah, seven total. Um, it's humanoid at the very least. It, it doesn't look monstrous. Um, looks kind of like an average skeleton. It's exactly what you would expect when you say skeleton. It looks like a skeleton. Um, it could be human, it could be many other humanoid races. Unlikely to, it's certainly too tall to be dwarf halfling um, gnome, and doesn't seem the right skeletal structure for a larger, you know, giant or orc. So you're in the range of, could be elven, human, 
tiefling. You've got lots of options. But doesn't appear to be the kind of alien structure of a Deva based on your initial um, view. Is there anything around? I'm trying to think if whatever the fuck killed this thing for the monolith. I have, I have a guess, but I want to make sure it's not just like a radial thing. Is There's no change in the Good stone question. that looks like it might have taken some damage if there was a burst or anything like that. Sure. Uh, you can make, in this case, our investigation totally makes sense for that. How far are we from the skeleton while she's doing that? Like, how close are we to the monolith and the skelly? To get close enough to get this kind of investigation, you guys would be within five feet. Like, you're encircling it. And to especially to do your check, you'd have to be, like, touching and moving Mm -hmm. the skeleton to, like, look and see. You're not doing, you know, you didn't lift the whole thing up. I'm not going to make you do that. But to get a a look, you got to get close enough to kind of get an idea of the bone structure. 30-20. Thanks. Uh, Again, here, the stone looks... uh, untouched uh, for the most part. You can see there are there are some signs of what looks like um, what you would expect of like a battle wear and tear. Like you can see slash marks here and there, but nothing that looks like, you know, no sign of scorch marks, no sign of a perpetual kind of radial effect where things have been withered away, like the stone has been warped in any way. It's It, it looks more like if someone had a fight here, you could see a couple of slashes here and there but not not many, even. Uh, another question about the skeleton, unless anyone else is doing some. Do it. Um, it's, a, it's, a little, it's a little hole, and I'm trying to figure out what he might have done if he stuck his finger in it. Do his hands look, like the, the bones on his hands, especially the pointer fingers, look like there's any indication or anything weird about them or you can make a medicine check as well Ooh, 17 plus where's my medicine i think it's only a one 18. okay with boone's kind of initial assessment and kind of making a point to not really touch anything but seeing that you know it seems to be certainly dead and not undead um you gather that even with a with a seven medicine check Mary, your medicine check as you kind of make your way closer and begin kind of shifting and actually like poking and prodding and lifting. You begin looking at the hands. The hands look normal. But as you do kind of pull, you know, it's leaned off to the one side. So you have to kind of lift its other arm. And as you kind of shift its body, the head just kind of falls off the body. And it hits and it kind of rolls to look up at you. And that's for a moment ominous and unsettling. Um, but it doesn't do anything. It doesn't say anything, which would be funny. But what you catch that is of importance to you is the hands are fully intact, all 10 digits, but the space on the skull's eye, the right eye has multiple like uh, marks in the bone where things have cut into and around the bone, around the uh, occipital area. Ooh. Boone will like move close, like notice that and just like tap his own eye and then like look at like the eye of the monolith. An eye for an eye. Oh fuck. Well, I don't think any of us is going to be offering up a chance of depth perception going forward. Funny guy. I would. I would. If it means getting Bell back, I would. But do we even know what this does? Why we need to do it? There's no writing on this thing, is there? Now you can see. You haven't given it a full once over just yet, like officially. But it's also kind of concerning that this man died here despite potentially doing that. With that check, Kyle, was there any indication? of how long the skeleton's been here? Like how old it is? Uh, I mean, I guess if it was magically turned into a skeleton, that's not really gonna matter. 
No, that wouldn't that wouldn't give you any information. But it, it's difficult to to date this this skeleton. You you, you know, it could, it, there's a wide range of what it could be from you know a hundred years to several hundred years. It's too difficult to give you anything more than that. You know, but to the it doesn't point, look fresh. It doesn't look fresh. No, it's it's okay. skeletal and dried and kind of cracked. Um, but what Boone says there about giving it kind of freely this looks like it was not freely given it's a very important addendum <laughs> based on the based on the amount franticness of, yeah exactly the the look of how this was taken and like how many slash marks and like dig marks that have come into the eye this was a fight in which an eye was taken. Do we have any dragon dyes in our bag of holding? Because we did take some. Oh, oh, I um, do. I have an eye on my necklace. It's true. You do have an eye oh. on your necklace. I do. That's pretty fucking cool. Literally I don't know if it's gonna work, but that's cool shit. Maybe 90 games you've had an eye on your necklace. Yeah. That somehow has not decayed. It oh, it's been perfect. I think small, yeah. even though the creature it came from is massive. Mm. You know, we did some <laughs> magic stuff. It's magic. This is our hope. Okay, if we use this, are you guys sure? Do you think this will work? Oh, we have I no don't... fucking idea. But I mean, I don't know what else to try at this point. I also don't know. Is this a test? Is leaving it alone a test? Is doing something with it the answer? We're not sure. Let's just try some shit and be safe about it. The Davis said, okay. the Davis said through her, look up at the lady, that we'd be tested about our heroics and being our, and living up to being the heroes we think we are. So I reckon it's good deeds, heroic deeds, deeds of faith and trust. Anyways, that's just a thought to keep in mind through all of this. I don't know if we should or shouldn't, but just wanted to keep that in mind. Okay. Let's do it. If you think, though, just one more thing. Hey, yeah, I see you rip it off. Yeah. We don't know if something came out and did that to this guy, or perhaps this guy was with a party a lot like this. And uh, he got the short end of the straw, and they did that to him to try and get out. Just something to think about. Might not be the monsters in the mist. Might be the monsters around us. Well, we're the last group of people to turn on each other, so I don't think we need to worry about that. Oh, you get off? You're gonna put it in uh, into the slot? I'll look at Mary first and be like, give her a signal, be like, can I do it? Boone just takes out his glaive. <laughs> and I'll try it. some shit. The second you kind of place it in, immediately the eye around it begins to light up. You can see blue energy kind of begin to fill in the outline of the eye, the lid, and it begins to kind of light the eye that you place into the hole. Uh, as it does, a just below it, you know, maybe a foot below it, you can see in common uh, writing kind of etched out that kind of faintly glows and kind of sits off of the monolith by maybe an inch or two. Uh, and it's kind of this illusory script that says, what would you ask of the lady? And Brawley as the one to present, what do you ask of the lady? Oh, no. <laughs> um, oh, my gosh. The, I mean, the uh, intent was uh, the, um, what am I trying to say? What, how the, the Deba phrased these kind of challenges was what aid would you ask of her? What could she do for you? What would you yeah. want? What her do you want? help. We need her help. She wants Val back and she wants 
the lady to help with getting back at the general so he is no longer an issue. So I would request for her assistance in helping us. A little bit more specific, how? We need her strength. You ask for strength? Her strength to help us, since we can't take out the general. Okay. And we need, yeah. Uh, as you make your request for her strength to help strike down the general in both vengeance and for the good of her city, you watch the eye close and like kind of blink open again. And the writing kind of dissipates into this kind of faint kind of shift of fog. Um, and in the absence of it, like a panel of the monolith like kind of shifts open. Uh, and you see a scabbard of a weapon this kind of curved katana blade. Um, it's in this kind of faintly kind of purple and black uh, scabbard. And you can see the, the handle of it is a two-handed uh, katana blade. It's wrapped in, in this like very well intricately wound leather. And it seems to have not seen any use. It's a pristine weapon. Um, and you can just see it's just kind of stuck out of the scabbard just by a little bit. And on the blade itself, you can see on the, the one edge is this, like I say, a pristine metal. But on the bladed edge, you can see the actual blade by about an inch is this purple crystalline blade. You can see that it kind of shifts open and as you see it there, the monolith shifts again and it kind of just, it fades from sight, but your request has been made. You can see it like a, actually you can feel a shift and you can all kind of hear as the lady overlooking kind of bows her head ever so slightly. And this is such a slow move of this a monstrous creature. And she just kind of bows and then comes back up. And you can feel like as she does, like a wave of wind and like energy kind of presses down and then energy is kind of sucked back up as your first request is made. Oh, that was so fucking smart. Uh, you hear the kind of this word, this phrase in your head that... Um, you will find the blade of affliction upon meeting the lady. Dope. Super cool. Oh, that sounds hey guys. so fucking cool. That yeah. weapon is just Allie's aesthetic. Like, not even Alana. <laughs> That's it's true. Just it's, Allie. It's, look at this girl. This is Allie. Purple and black? Come on. Fucking dope purple katana. Let's get real here. Uh. What would you ask of the lady? It's the question written in common. So y'all, think of things you want to ask the lady that are not like your hand in marriage. Hondo. Name, <laughs> leave the name. Nemo, ooh. Hondo coming in clutch. That's another good one. <laughs> and can you rescue Val? This is the soul of Valentine. You just hear in the back of your mind. We need the name. Just to think about things we need as priorities. The name of Asma. Actually, well, yeah, that's that's a good request. The other path to that was we know the general has a book of that. Remember the whole spooky Which vision? we know that she probably wants or could use because it would have his name in it as well. So I imagine if we can get that book, that's a source of a lot of his power. We don't even need to fucking kill him. We just need to get that book to the lady. Yep. And then the other thing is we need a way, we need to leave Sigil. We also need, in terms of if it's going to be like, hey, which is my interpretation of what she's asking us is, hey, you're going to go try to beat the shit out of General. 
how can I help you do that? Right. So like Allie's asking for strength, like that's right. interesting. Um, but thinking of like, we need a way to uh, negate his like healing. Right. I like, feel like the, that kind of stuff too. I feel like the two we got to get, if these are tests and we can fail some of them, we got to get, Hey, we need a way out of here. That's one. Like if we, if we don't get out of sigil, we're fucked. So next chance, chance we get, we got to ask for that and hope that we get a pass on it. Um, or else the 10th layer of hell is going to befall the material plane. And then the beautiful image of Valentine just fades. <laughs> well, well done, Miss Brawley. That looks like a modified weapon. Thanks. I can't wait to use it. Just to clarify, I don't think you have it yet. I think it, you said it's the Lady of Pain has it? Yeah, it just kind of like, okay. it showed is like, this is this is what you requested. This is the reward. This okay. is to be discussed and fought for upon your, your audience with the lady, should you make it to that point. Okay. Also, don't Go forget ahead. to get your eye back. The is eye, sorry, that's a good uh, point. The what? eye kind of burns away. Bam! Okay. And unfortunately, it okay, is, so. uh, it's gone. Ask her for an eye, another a replacement eye. <laughs> Hi, could I have my giant eye back? <laughs> uh, giant why don't eye we... actually wasn't giant. <laughs> why don't we keep going past this line where I wrote the notes down? It's basically straight or right. You got I east or, or south. We're going to use cardinal directions from, from mm. my. So east is the way we were going still. We could keep going east. East? You guys like sure. that? Sure. Yep. Just okay. do a straight line. That's fine with right me. Now. Uh, if you're going to continue doing the same checks as before, please let me know if you want to change it up. But uh, as we kind of shift from place to place, I'm going to get the same checks unless you guys want to change it up. Um, everybody I think it's easy just to do the same yeah. ones. Yeah. Then uh, Gord, perception with advantage in the back, if Allie's cool giving you aid. Yeah, um, absolutely. Hondo, perception for the front, Mary, investigation, and Boone, throw me a D20. Boone, just a fun little D20. Let's roll with that. 26. Oh, man, these boon these boon dices. How do I get new boon dice? Because it has not been great. <laughs> Just I know this is totally out of game, but like, do you guys have access to my D and D dice options when I share? Stuff? I don't think so. I don't oh, think I don't so. Because so. I've got like. I don't know, a dozen different dice sets. Because you've been buying us all dice every week. <laughs> no, <laughs> just, you, you get so many free ones as being like a master member or whatever whatever the thing is. Um, God, I wonder if I can change mine because I need to. Mine was a, I know it's not like necessarily a thing, but mine was a net one. Oh, okay. That's important. How do I change these fucking dice? Gord, what did you say you got? 26. Nice. Uh, Hondo 22. 22, okay. Yeah, it's low for me. Hondo Perception. 18. Oof. And Perception, I think, was uh, 14, yes, so 32. A fuckload. Uh, <laughs> as you guys begin making your way through this next section, continuing to the east, continuing the, the direction you began coming down here, um, you begin just kind of following the path and you begin very quickly to leave behind this other space. And within a few seconds of passing, uh, continuing down this path, you can see again, you you fall into a 15 by 15 foot kind of walkway as you can see 15 to 20 feet forwards and backwards and very quickly are leaving behind this monolith area uh, and have no sound or sight on it any longer after but 15, 20 seconds. You begin walking for quite some time before you see anything change. Um, at this point, I need everyone to make a constitution saving throw. Everyone's within 10 feet of me, you all get plus three. Boone's in the middle, so you would be within 10 feet. Eight. Okay. Is that with the plus three as well? Okay. Oh man, wow, that's a bad roll. <laughs> uh, 19 for Booney. Okay. Let's call him 29. Out. Wow. 22. Okay. H. Hando. 
Ooh, new dice. Oh my god, it's like a new dice for Hondo. Yeah, for some reason the Google one's not 100% working, so. Oh, weird. Hondo, there's this great thing called D&D Beyond. <laughs> it takes try. too long to load on my computer. You can do it on your phone. <laughs> you can do it on your phone and roll. That's a good point. Regardless, <laughs> an 18 on the dice plus Boone's three plus whatever your plus whatever is, your is plenty. Yeah. Unfortunately, Gordo, you're going to suffer a point of exhaustion as you guys have Ooh. pushed deep past midnight and have been, it's been a long day. This is the same day of your uh, adventures into the lower ward and then back into the sewers and now into this. And unfortunately, you're pushing past exhaustion. The rest of you are able to kind of use the um, the adrenaline of whatever this is and the kind of the need to get through this and the, the kind of anticipation of, okay, we can finally hope to get some of these things. Your hope for returning Valentine, your hope for getting home for vengeance kind of spurns you forward. But Gord, unfortunately, that exhaustion is starting to creep up on you. And it's a stark reminder to all of you that the longer this takes, oh, God. you may either need to settle in for a rest and hope for the best or push through. And that's a decision you have to make at some point. DM, you can tell me, I don't even know this, uh, like if this would work or not, but lay on hands. If I spend five, I can either cure a disease or neutralize a poison. Would that affect exhaustion? Uh, exhaustion is not so much a disease, it's a yeah. condition. Um, and the only spell that can relieve it is uh, greater restoration, greater? unfortunately. I don't know if I have that checked. It's a fifth, so you don't, I don't think. I don't think okay, you cool. have fifths at your level. Um, yeah, unfortunately, it's a tough one. You stuck with it, kid. Yeah, but, you know, now you, you've got the one, it's not something that's gonna happen every couple of minutes. It's, if yeah. as you progress hours, you know, so it's, that's more where we're in the, in the talk of, of exhaustion. But anyway, uh, as you do push deeper and deeper and longer into your time here, you begin just kind of growing through the monotony of walking this same path. And it seems it's like a treadmill. Nothing is changing. And you just step after step after step after step walking with no change, visually or audibly. It is quiet. It is all encompassing and pervasive. Yet, finally, after God knows how long, you out front, Hondo and Mary, you don't trip, but you kick a chunk of stone. For the first time, something is different in your path. And there's this hunk of stone. And as you take a couple of steps forward, you can see a bunch of small chipped stone chunks and pebbles. And, you can see larger, deeper grooves and scars in the otherwise clean stonework. Uh, and for the next minute, two minutes, the stone is completely chipped and broken and destroyed, either like a meteoric slam radiated out or multiple large gouging attacks or actions were taken here. How long? You're not sure. Um, but Mary, with your investigation, as you guys are walking and kind of picking your way carefully, kind of taking a little bit slower as you're moving through this now kind of difficult terrain, though there's no sign of any traps or anything like that, and no signs of movement of any other creatures beyond yourselves. Mary, in one of these particularly deep grooves, like a heavy like crater that's like five feet deep. You can see uh, a cleaved section of um, a skeletal arm that's cut off just to, like midway down the forearm, you'd say. So it's just like half forearm up to hand. Uh, and it, But it's clenched tightly around something and you can just see the glint of a chain kind of just outside of the, the hand. Is it a, a hum humanoid yeah. side size? Oh yes, yeah. It's like a classic skeleton hand. 
Gotcha. Yeah, okay. Just making sure it's not like giant or little or. Nope. That's a very fair clarifying question because that would change things greatly. <laughs> uh, I miss Mage Hand. Um, What's that? It's not deep down, but I know you don't want to touch things. More like I don't want to touch I know my name Mage Hand. He's a. Uh, Does he? Trixie wrote. Do you have Mage Hand? Yes, I do. Hmm, you can use that. Try and get the chain out of there. I could. I'll do it. Yeah. All right. Let me. What do you want him to roll for that? No roll. It's mage hand. There's no. There's no particular roll. It's not far deep in there. It's only like a five foot groove. You guys are just being super cautious, which is smart. Um, Hondo, you cast your mage hand. It mm-hmm. drifts down. Do you want to pick up the whole, um, the whole arm, or do you want to just take the chain? Let's go with the whole arm. You grab with your mage hand, grab hold of the end of the the bone, and you bring it up before you all. And you can see the chain is kind of wound between two fingers um, and just kind of dangling off a third. And as you kind of lift it up, you can see from within the clutched fist, a symbol, a circular symbol drops. And as your mage hand kind of brings it closer between you and Mary and the rest of the group, slowly kind of catching up just behind. You can see the symbol is a black disc with a purple border in a perfect, perfect circle. So a black circle and then a purple circle outside of it, or a purple circle with a black circle inside of it, how you want to look at it. <clears throat> and on like, just on like a gold chain, a simple chain, nothing of particular interest there, but the symbol is what's important. The hand looks humanoid. Anyone, anyone recognize that? If anyone wants to make a religion check, you're more than welcome across the board. Who's good at religion? I got a minus one. (laughs) I think, Boone, this is your domain. I got a minus one. one. I ain't the same guy I was before. (laughs) It should be, in theory. I got a plus two. I know, I was like, why do I have a minus one? (laughs) I'll the check. Con- I was gonna say, Kev, you might have the highest. Yeah, religion. I'm you plus four. Plus four. What you're well read. How am I a religious? Mm-hmm. You're a world. You're worldly. You're worldly. You're worldly. You've, You've been so many places. Slept with yeah. so many people who probably mm-hmm. all have you know, different like, deities. Well, I just rolled a twenty. Oh. Hey. <laughs> okay. Hondo. As you're kind of, you know, razzing the group at why would I know religion and why should I be the one to understand, you actually recognize it. Um, and there's a there's a moment where you reflect on a, a, a warm evening on the coast somewhere, betting a particularly um, buxom drow and who happened to wear this similar symbol. A a deity known in the Underdark, um, known as Shar. Um, a dark deity, definitely. Um, and not one that is, um, Invisaria is not particularly well known, um, but it was something of interest that you spoke of before other things happened. And it always kind of lingered in, in your mind. And at that moment, you have that kind of recollection of this Shar. Doesn't mean anything to anybody else, but it seems to be a drow or underdark deity. I don't even have like detect magic or any any shit like that, so I can't I can't tell you nothing. I might have. Can I check? Kyle, if, is there anything on the back? Like, there's any no inscription? What? simple there's nothing of particular note uh i will say hondo you rolled the natural 20 um char being the drow or underdark goddess of like darkness and night and, um in some schools of magic it's like kind of a clerical type thing mm-hmm. some go in the paladin route of like um fighting for her um but it is she is relatively rare where you guys come I do have my tattoo that can check for evil and good. Um, How long does that last for? It's good. Detect evil and good, yes. 
It lasts for uh, one action. Oh, casting time, one action. Duration. The duration. Duration, yeah. Duration. It just says for the duration. 10 minutes. It doesn't say any duration. It just says for the duration. Wait, am I missing something? It'll be. This, yeah. You might have to look at the spell itself. For the duration, you know if there's an aberration, celestial, elemental, fey, fiend, or undead within 30 feet of you, as well as where the creature is located. Similarly, you know if there is a place or object within 30 feet of you that has been magically consecrated or desecrated. The spell can penetrate most barriers, but it is blocked by one foot of stone, one inch of common metal, a thin sheet of lead, or three feet of wood or dirt. Last 10 minutes. Oh, yeah, there we go. Concentration up to 10 minutes. Yeah. It could be useful just even having it on right now. So, yeah, can I do it? Can I ask one thing? Is mm-hmm. this the same day from our fight with those people on the bridge? Yeah. Yeah. And we didn't long rest since then? Nope. You, have no, you haven't had a long rest. I think rest. we just short rested when we got back. You short right? rested at Hilda's house while you guys were waiting for everyone That's to right. come together. Gord had to attune to the scrying eye, yeah. uh, the orb. You were short rested there. You made your way back to, you had, like started spreading a whisper campaign. You guys went to the bathhouse. Uh, right. And then at the end of that, you went down to the sewers, hoping to have a conversation. It turned into a fight, yep. and then you got pulled here. I just wanted to make sure my fourth level was unchecked, but it should be checked because I used to mention during that fight with Brawley. So anyways, we're good. Sorry to come back. That's okay. That's good clarification. That's important. Uh, okay, well, it's up to Kevin. Are you going to cast Detect Good and Evil, or are you going to hold yep. that? Okay. You cast it out. Uh, you activate your your tattoo, uh, and you feel the magical energy kind of surge through you, feeling that kind of burst of energy, uh, and it kind of clouds your eyes for just a moment. Um, but you feel it take over your vision, and nothing seems to change. None of your fellows here ring out as anything more than you'd expect. This is a simple bone hand, and the item itself doesn't seem to bear any uh, alignment. Okay. But for the next 10 minutes, you have that kind of up and running. Um, As you guys continue, there seems to not be any change east or west or south, I should say. So it continues west or continues east or you can turn back west, continue east. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing, there's nothing obvious we could do here. We have this. Something came and chopped off this shit's hand. Does the, um, does the chop of the, the bone, does it look like it was a sharp object or like it was broken? It looks very cleanly cut. Okay. Uh, okay, one second. As you guys continue, I'll carry over your um, your checks because nothing has officially kind of changed. The topography changes slightly as you guys begin kind of continuing down this direction, uh, continuing continuing east. Um, the the chips and breaks in the stone begin to kind of alleviate, and it seemed this this stretch of what you gather was roughly thirty to fifty feet would be like this sign of like this battle, whatever had taken place here, this broken stone area, um, would be about 50, maybe, maybe 60 feet uh, before it begins to kind of return back to, to normal. And you continue on for um, another five, 10, 15, so on minutes. It's surprising again, that consistent like repetitiveness before uh you again see it kind of begin to open up and there's a little bit of an open it's not quite as big as the area where the monolith was uh you can see the stone kind of opens and it does not con- open anywhere to the left the wall of fog kind of continues continue as, as it did to the left but to your right it does open up and there's a small courtyard and you actually see a couple of small uh, like shrubs and trees there are some small like 
some some small wildlife here, which rings out as a little odd. Um, and to your perception of the of the front two, Mary and Honda, you can see the you can hear the crackle of a fire, and you can faintly see a a fire, and you can see the silhouette of a figure sitting at that fire. And Hondo and Mary and Gord, with your perceptions, uh, you can hear the sound of um, a male voice speaking. What seems to be um, almost like a almost singing a song, but it's more like um, more like a hymn or like a like a melodic prayer of some kind. Um, that does not appear to be the same figure sitting at the fire. You can hear it kind of off a little further to the right. And you guys pause as you see this. It's about 20 feet away. It's just at the cusp of like where the fog begins to kind of fade. So we can't see, all we see is the shape, right? We don't get anything. At the 20 foot range, just where the fog is kind of in that kind of somewhat uh, translucent where you can kind of see through it. You can see that a figure is facing away from you, sat at the fire. You can see the fire is, is clear and you can see that through the fog. And you can hear another figure, not in sight, but is not the figure at the fire, a little further south. Is the hymn, is it in common? Uh, or it's just it, nothing, nothing it doesn't specific? appear. It doesn't appear to you. What languages do you speak? Uh, common, Elvish, uh, Orcish, and what's the last one? Gnomish? No, Halfling. It's none of those. Gnomish. I speak Inferno. Not Inferno? Uh, I speak Primor. Oh, I have, uh, I can speak any language. You can use your ring if you wish. Although, keep in mind, is that a concentration spell? Because that would kick out your detect good and evil. Is that oh. is that flaring on these peeps? Uh, thus far, you are 30 feet. Uh, hasn't changed. Uh, Everything okay. might be a test. Are you looking up if it's concentration cast? I'm looking for because I remember I got rid of the ring. I think he got tongues. It's different ring. Oh, that's, that's right. it. Tongues. tongues is the spell. Tongues, tongues okay. is not concentration. Grants you grants the creature you touch the ability to understand any spoken language it hears. And Moreover, speak. when the target speaks, any creature that knows at least one language and can hear the target understands what it says. You could cast that. It depends on the level. It's just if you don't want to waste the spell slot. Not waste, but use the spell slot. The third uh, level, it's not concentration, so it wouldn't kick out your other spell. But for an hour, you would understand anything you hear. And it wouldn't kick it out, you said? No, nope, you would keep both if you wanted to do that. But All it would right, use a third level spell. Let's do it. Okay. Uh, hearing this and not understanding its its origin or, or its placing, everyone kind of freezes up and there's a, little, a couple of looks of uncertainty as Hondo wants to know, cast the spell and immediately there's this kind of like shift of language barrier, this kind of like garbled like in between before it crystallizes and clears um, and you do hear this um, this hymn and this male voice and it is it is a, it's a song, it's a story as most hymns uh, are in some capacity of the protections in the darkness and it does appear to align with someone a him or a prayer to Shar in undercommon, which you understand. This person could be Drow. Drow speak undercommon. <clears throat> Drow's a dark elf. Didn't Lavender speak undercommon? She does. That would have been helpful. <laughs> Boone will um like sensing this moment. Um, how would we do this? They'll like touch the like blades of the the jade like glaive 
and just kind of like almost like take off like three shards uh, and he'll like place one shard like on his armor and then like go like this and two little shards will go to Raleigh and Mary and he'll cast Bless. So for one minute we got Bless. Okay. It's attacks and saves, right? Mm-hmm. Oh. oh, I thought it was ability closer. checks too. That's no, it's not Anyways, ability checks. If you if you don't want to use it for ability checks, you don't have to cast the spell. If you thought it was ability checks, yeah, I thought it was ability checks. Do you mind? That's fine. He'll have gone like this, and then just put his. If you have closer. guidance, that could aid you for ability checks. Okay. Actually, no, uh, paladins don't have cantrips. My apologies. Uh, do, Kevin, would you pass that information along? Yeah. Should we see if uh, one of these fellas is missing an arm? Yeah. Maybe this, return some belongings? This is a test. Let's go. Let's do it. You begin making your way kind of more openly into the courtyard. Um, and it is small. It's just a small little offshoot from the main path. There's a little, like, tucked little courtyard. Um, and almost centered in it is the fire. And as you get close, you can see uh, a human male in, in robes, um, sat looking over a book of some kind uh, and you can see the kind of flare of some incantation in, in the right hand this caster of some capacity is kind of working on incantation in this very low voice that you couldn't even catch before until you get a little closer he's almost mumbling what you assume is to be some kind of element of incantation the prayer kind of continues but Honda you can hear it kind of coming to to an end as you make your way close you can see the human male sat at the fire um, quickly kind of looking looks a little uh, mid middle aged um, reddish hair but you can see a little bit of a little bit of graying and red robes as well um, and is just kind of hasn't shifted to your approach. Continues Does this rise. figure have any weapons, any gear? Does he look like he's like adventure or just like a dude? This person sitting at the fire or the yeah. other person? Okay, go ahead and make a perception. Person check. sitting at the fire. Ooh, not very good. My rules haven't been great. 14. Uh, difficult to tell. You can see there is a pack that is kind of stashed a little bit away, and there's like a bedroll that looks like it has been kind of seen its better days, um, kind of tucked off to the side on the opposite side of the fire. You can see that the, the clothing and the robes are tattered. They've seen wear and tear. Um, it's You can't see anything more than that, unfortunately. But at least someone who had been traveling at some point not just like someone who lived in the city and got plucked and chucked or whatever. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm not sure if Kev was doing anything because he was up front. Uh, no, I'm not going to do anything right now. Okay. Have they seemed to notice us? Mm-hmm. I wouldn't say we're being particularly quiet. <clears throat> How far out are we? Up to you guys. You saw them at 20 feet. I'd say another 5, 10 feet to get that look. So 10, 15 feet. And they're sitting down, right? The one is, you still have not seen uh, the one you, who you hear, though, as you guys have been kind of waiting and slowly making your approach, the hymn does kind of end, and you can hear the sounds of a figure kind of approaching from in the fog. And as you guys are kind of in this kind of unsure what to do, you watch as this um, drow male, uh, you can see, uh, is wearing like what looks like chain mail that is relatively well taken care of by the looks of it, but it's it, you can see obvious signs of repair. Um, and he's kind of slinging a, a leather um, like vest back over top of the chain mail and is kind of in the process of buttoning and tying up um, and tucking a necklace underneath. And makes his way back to the fire and just kind of makes his way over to the um, the male uh, who's still kind of working on this book and just puts a hand to his shoulder and kind of overlooks and just kind of stands and watches him work. Um, As you guys have got within close, within 10 feet, 
he didn't notice your approach. He didn't say anything. He didn't look in your direction. So, okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take like just a couple of ball bearings Mm -hmm. and I'm just going to like toss them toward them. And then if they react, I'm going to be like, oh, excuse me. I must have dropped those. Um, Hello. Okay. You begin kind of shifting through your pockets for a couple of ball bearings you always have on hand. You can kind of toss them and they clatter against the stone and one rolls directly underneath the robes of this male figure. And neither seem to make any reaction. Okay. I'll go I'll go up to them and be like, uh, excuse me, I, I apologize. I have dropped some ball bearings here. You make My your name way is Henry right up into the camp and you go through this neither look in your direction and as you kind of step into the fire area right at the, at the campfire right beside them they just begin to kind of fade away Dang. this illusion just begins to kind of dissipate um, as you're now standing there you can see the there is signs of like a campsite but the fire is like long, long cold. Um, and there's no sign of any recent habitation. Do we all see that fade? Yep. The one thing I will say, Honda, you notice as they were there, they both looked they both looked tired and they both looked um, they both looked gaunt. They looked like sailors on the end of a long journey hoping to come home or just on the cusp of coming home but things have gotten hard i sense trapped souls i sense trouble once happy people have been taken from this spot as soon as we see safade i'm gonna look around and like is this an ambush like was this like a lure like just to make sure that nothing else is watching us they're gonna jump out uh Sure, go ahead and make a perception check. Jesus, I'm rolling like, I'm rolling bad tonight. That was a three on the dice. Oh boy. So, dirty the 10. You quickly look around and best you gather, there's nothing there. I'll back her up and I will look around and say, show yourself if this is a lure. We don't play games. Honda, you call out. It's quiet. Your voice rings off, but nothing seems to respond. Nothing jumps from the shadows. This this could be like... That was a memory of before. And what we just walked through is what happened after. If that symbol, what you're holding there, is what that man just tucked away. And whatever did that, the creators that separated his arm from his body, that's yet to happen. Maybe it could happen to us. Warning. This could be a test of longevity. We've been walking a long time. They seem pretty tired. Um, can you remind us, Kyle, this was like, we were walking on a path and this kind of happened in a little jet out to the right, correct? It's not like another crossroads. This is it. as you've now kind of gotten into the campsite, you can see there is like more of the, the wall. Like there's just a little jet of about 15 to 20 feet. Just kind of comes in almost square 15, 20 feet, but the path continues to the, to the east. Is and there like, this... sorry, go ahead. I was just gonna say, is there, you mentioned like, there's the remains of a campsite. Is that worth poking through with one of our good pokers? You guys want to try like investigating this? I can look around. Uh, part of it, actually, I was going to ask is if like there's a remains of a campfire. A little bit. Like there's like I was a gonna, little pit. I was just thinking about what happens if we try to light it. Um, relight the fire. Um, not necessarily to stay, I don't fucking know, just to see if anything, if that draws anything, if like the fire light itself was their end, if, 
Yeah, I don't know, Honda, you want to take a look through their shit if I poke around this? Or yeah. look around where they where their stuff was, if they drop anything? I can do that. Okay, go ahead and make an investigation. And Mary, you're going to try and light the fire? Yeah, I'm just going to, I don't know. I don't know if it'll do anything. Uh, two. Oof. But my investigation is a uh, proficient, or uh, expert, I mean. Nice. So that's 10 and 13, 23. Yeah. Uh, you feel very confident that there is nothing left in this space. You do a really solid once over in the area. You double and triple check the area where the bedroll was and where the, the guy had gone to pray. There's nothing in this space. And this really, it's a very small area to check. So you feel very confident that. Uh, Mary, you light the fire. Uh, you have any, there's not a whole lot of like anything left to light. Uh, you could possibly get something small, but if you have something to add to it, to like make a fire, you could certainly try. Um, I mean, I have just like, you know, from adventurer's kit that I haven't used in forever. I just have like torches. Mm -hmm. Like, could I use one of those? Absolutely, yeah, that's what you want to do. Or a couple of them. Like, I think it's like a pack of 10 or five torches that I'm probably never going to use otherwise. <laughs> yeah, you take out a couple and they're already kind of primed and, me, primed and ready to go. And you kind of break some of it. So I kind of get some like fresh wood underneath. You begin quickly using your tinderbox and you light a fire as Hondo's taking a minute or two to check the campsite. And you just take a minute the fire lights and as like a minute passes and there's a, it's like a nice reprieve this warmth you hear a shifting of metal on stone coming from the east the direction you were about to pass like multiple drags of metal on stone. This it's growing louder. What do you do? I would recommend, although it's like up to everyone, and I know we have one that's not very stealthy, to kind of push our backs up against the wall in the direction, like in the jut out part, in the direction that they're coming. So that like, kind of like ducking into an alley and letting something pass you. Mm -hmm. just to see if we can get an eye on this thing before it sees us. Us specifically, if the fire's there, it might even pause to look at that, which will get us a better look at whatever the fuck this is. Okay. Uh, they'll start moving and like gesture to people if people want to try to do that quietly as well. If you want to try and tuck up against the wall, not all of you can fit. You can get about three of you, maybe four of you, tightly in against the wall. But one person is going to not be up against the wall uh, that they're coming from just because there's five of you and it's only about 15, 20 feet. I know it's the sneakiest, well, you can hide in anything. I was gonna say, there's bushes and shit to hide behind here, right? There's a little bit of cover. So Hondo's gonna take, you're gonna hide just kind of elsewhere in, in the space, Hondo? Yep. And everyone else is gonna tuck up against this wall? Okay. Uh, stealth checks all around. Boone, could Boone, as he's sprinting this wall, cast Shield of Faith on himself? Yeah. Is there a verbal component to that? There's verbal, somatic, and material? Uh, make a stealth check at disadvantage. God. They were dead even with each other, so nine. Okay. Uh, Alana? Uh, 17. Okay. Hondo? Mary? 31. Okay. And you rolled as low as you possibly could. You got a 10. Gord stealth? 23. Oof. Okay. Uh, as you all begin to kind of quickly sprint all together to hide, Honda, you just duck down into the foliage, almost right at the campsite, blades drawn at the ready, just in case. Uh, Boone, as you're kind of slowly rushing up and you take a moment just to quickly grab your, your yourself and, and hold your glaive and cast your spell. 
there's a, a flare of kind of that golden energy that enshrouds yourself. Uh, and you can see it in the dim light and the darkness of this gloom. It is like a beacon that boof, kind of like flares out unintentionally, plus your, your vocal component. And you just kind of, oh shit. And you kind of just like tuck off to the side and hide yourself. It doesn't like linger. There's not this like light on you, but for the moment of the cast, there's this energy to it. Uh, and you all quickly tuck in and hide. Are you holding for attacks or trying to stay hidden? I'm just following the lead. I don't make decisions. <laughs> like, uh, my question was like, it's coming down this path from the east. We tucked against that wall that in theory, whoever's out front and possibly the second person could get a, a jump attack, a sneak attack, if they wanted to try at the first sight, um, given if you were stealthy enough, or are you trying to stay hidden from whatever is approaching? I would, on my end, what I was thinking was almost like holding an action to like see them and try to get as much information about what the fuck it is that we're looking at. And you're not holding um, an attack. No, more like almost holding a perception check. Does that make sense? Or like to see if it's multiple creatures <laughs> to see like as much very, very quickly. Okay, what the fuck is here? What's going on? Well, the, the advantage of this space is because it's relatively small. You will get a close like eye on what it is relatively quickly. Okay. Um, and as no one is, is holding to attack, you're just holding to wait and see what happens. There's a long moment of this. <laughs> It goes louder and louder and louder until finally you see kind of bowing out the fog kind of pushes out and in the dissipation of fog and smoke you watch this golden rolling ball that you can see hundreds of small blades are propelling it forward rolling and rolling it's about 10 12 feet in circumference takes up almost the full capacity of the hallway itself and it rolls and rolls and rolls and it, it skids kind of and turns to a stop almost in the center like five feet away from the fire and four bladed legs shoot out from the bottom and like lift it up and then four bladed legs at the top just they attack like multiple like just just digging, diving, and stabbing into the ground where the fire is. The fire is decimated as they just shred this space and you watch bits of stone fly out. Um, it does not seem to have noticed your group and was focused on the fire. And you see that this construct like creature, device, is ferocious, heavily armored and plated and has multiple bladed appendages. What do you do? It's, um, I'm assuming that the uh, chips of stone and shit, it's pulling it, you know, damaging, look pretty familiar. Oh yeah, this damage pattern seems about right. After it decimates, what does it do? Like if we're just watching it do this. Is it still it do just doing it? It's more like, how long are you going to wait for it to be done and just hold yourself? If so, there's a, a 15, 20, 30 seconds of it just like clawing and raking at the ground until there's nothing left of this, of this fire pit. And it just digs. And it just finishes and the arms up top just fall back into the body. And it just kind of as you guys stay perfectly still, it rolls to the west, the direction you came. I'll come back to buy some minutes. After it's gone a little bit, but I'll just get up on one knee. Well, I guess we found out what cut that man's arm off. Yeah, the question is, what the fuck were we supposed to do with it? For, uh, 
a lady of pain who has a lot of blades. That thing sure had a lot of blades as well. Right. Was it smarter to just survive? Or was there supposed to be some kind of retribution, vengeance, justice for those two men? Why don't we keep walking and just find out? Might come back. Yeah, Gord, let us know if a uh, weird swirling blade sphere monster is coming up behind us. Seemed like it was drawn to the drawn to the fire, though. That's what brought it here. Let's be smart about not using anything too flashy. I think maybe it might have something to do with the pendant. I don't know. Continuing on? I think so. Yeah. With the sounds of the creature fading into the distance. And it's surprising how quickly that sound fades, uh, given what you know this path, this tunnel, should be just like echoing of stone. The element of this space, the fog, magic, whatever it is, the sound dampening that not far past your visual range, your auditory range cuts as well. But you continue west, uh, eastward. Uh, And you can see very fresh signs of chipped and cut up stone this construct just tore its path from. In about five minutes of travel again, you can see more and more signs of this creature's activity. Significant sections of stone chipped and chunked away, and you begin to see that some areas here kind of jet off to the left, and it's just been decimated in the same way as this path. 10, 15 feet of just stone, just carved and pulled away. And about this five minute point, you reach another similar campsite that kind of cuts off to the right ever so slightly. And uh, but there, and there's a similar singular uh, point where this creature has just gone to town and just torn and ripped and shredded. And it's kind of central. And as you're kind of slowly making your way past, just kind of keeping an eye, you do see sign of two figures in the base of one of this this crater. One wearing torn, destroyed red robes, the other in this kind of darkened armor and leather vest. The armor and, and clothing is tattered, and the bodies have turned to skeletal. Do they, do they both still have both arms? You want to make an investigation check? Uh, yeah. I'm going to skid down a couple of feet into this crater. The, uh, the mage is, has both arms, um, but the drow is missing. Hondo, you care to part with that amulet? Uh, well, I guess. Um, I would at least, like, I wouldn't say we probably brought the arm with us, although I guess Hondo could have if he wanted to. I don't know. <laughs> um, but I would just take the amulet and, like, put it with that figure, maybe resting just beside its head or something. Yeah. And, like, burying it in a little bit of the rubble. Just as a sign of respect, like, I don't know if there's anything more we could have done. There's not much you can do to bury it, unfortunately. I wasn't sure if there was like sand and shit in the. It's it's more just chunks of stone, but you could lay it okay. over and kind of place it back on the sure. over the head and on the chest. Um, and do you do you say anything, or is it just like the action, and kind of a resolute? She's not a very mm-hmm. well spoken. Um, as you do and you have this moment and everyone just kind of at your back you watch as the shadow energy of the center the black center of the amulet shift 
and you can just faintly see some purple markings that slowly begin to form the words, what would you ask of the lady? Ooh. That's on you, Mary. You did it. Um, how would I best phrase this? A way home when we need it. You let the you let the amulet kind of fall back to the chest of this figure. And as you issue the command, the ask for what you desire, you watch as the amulet, the purple band of circle around the amulet kind of flares and it glows and it's blinding for a moment as you kind of shield your eyes, you open once more and kind of forming of the purple light you see this spherical kind of platinum object this ornate doorknob of smooth polished kind of platinum you can see it's got many intricate runes kind of carved all over the space um, to which you can feel confident would be a key to a door somewhere home before it fades out. Fucking huge. That's huge. You just need to live. (laughs) Let's get the fuck out of here before the crazy ass sword sphere thing comes back. Uh, It was amazing, Mary. Ondo did literally all the work. I just gave it back to a dead skeleton. <laughs> well, would he have done that? All right, yeah, I agree with Bra- Miss Brawley. We should probably keep moving. Yeah. As you continue, let's get perception, investigation, and random check. Fun roll. Okay, I switched up my dice. Oh, my God. <laughs> Gotta switch it up again. What'd you get? I, I just haven't rolled over a 10. Uh, six. Okay. I also rolled a six. I have all. I think I've rolled the last roll where I rolled a 30 something. I rolled a 19. Everything other than that has been like under a 12. So I got a dirty uh, 20. <laughs> no, go to dndbeyond.com. You will love it. Are you you go. say that as a person who just said they haven't rolled above a 10. <laughs> <laughs> but if I was using my phone, I'm sure it'd be different. Uh, I need, yeah, rolls from Gord and Hondo perception, please. Yep. Six. Six. That's three sixes. It's a and level. Plus oh, three. Twenty-four. Twenty-four, twenty-three. Okay, perfect. Uh, you guys continue on another five minutes past this point. Uh, And feeling confident, having gained two pieces, two uh, opportunities. You continue and you all feel a slight shift in temperature. For the first time, another like sensor, sensory like your senses is activated you can feel that the the temperature does just drop a couple of degrees and for every couple of minutes that pass here over the next five to ten minutes it steadily drops to a, a chilly cold just above freezing if not freezing temperature it's not to the point where you know you're getting hurt by cold it's nothing like that but it's just uncomfortable um, Hondo, you're relatively okay. You're, you're managed with with the deep cold. Uh, but for the rest of you, it's just a little uncomfortable and unnerving. A new shift down here is just uncomfortable. Too much unknown. 
you begin to see the path here uh, open up once more and it opens up to the right and it continues forward a little ways, but you can see as you make your way into this space, this is a large space and it ends the Eastern March and descends South. You hit a corner, you hit a wall. And at this corner, this open expanse of almost cave, uh, cavern, less natural or uh, less stonework, more natural cavern. Though the walls of fog or smoke remain, the stone path you watch kind of shift and begin to encircle a deep iced lake or pond, some large body of water, the surface completely kind of frosted and frozen. perception from Honda as you guys make your way. It's not far from like when you first enter into this room to the, the first edge of this, this lake. You're only about 15 feet from it. You make your way to its edge. And across it you can hear the shifting of something large. Something heavy. Heavy footfalls. <clears throat> Gord from behind. The sounds of two approaching creatures, one ahead and one behind, approaching fast. Can we hide? Can we hide quick? Let's take a break. We fight. <laughs> we fight. To the we just did two good things without fighting. <laughs> let, let these two things fight when they meet on the road. It could certainly happen. However, I need a drink. My, I'm, I'm growing parched. And <laughs> should things go sideways, I need to set something up. Okay. So let's take like take five minutes. Not, not too long. As we jump back in to refresh your memories, you have the sounds of something heavy moving, uh, almost at like a direct southeastern direction like a straight across, across this like frigid frozen lake. And what sounds like this bladed construct making its way this way from behind. Uh, this lake is like roughly 40 feet in, uh, uh, 40 feet across and is frozen across. Uh, and there's kind of the, the stone continues east and then south. And there's like a little bit of a path around it but not fully. What do you do? Let's try, let's try and hide. Let these things collide with each other, see what happens. Is there anywhere to hide? You could attempt to try and hide uh, within some of like the ice buildup along the edge of the the ice itself. This the, the lake is kind of sunken down, so you could in theory try and get up on the ice and use the ice to like kind of hide yourselves from creatures along the outskirts. Uh, it's certainly possible. I'm sorry, can you, you might have to repeat. I'm sorry if I missed this. Um, one of the creatures is on the ice? On the outskirts. Uh, and actually, you know, in fairness, you're not entirely sure where they are, but it seems like on the outskirts, given how you can, how far you can see across the room. Um, you can see the edge of the ice. It doesn't seem like you see the creature, so. It's not like coming from the ice. No. That's what was scaring me at first. Okay. Um, if we can't see it, then it's gonna be hard to know how to hide from it. But you do I'm just looking at my shelf quickly. That sounds big. There's no next step. From behind. Sorry, that sounds like one of those scary balls. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna try and hide. Okay. Uh, is everyone gonna try and hide on here? Let's let's show you a little bit of this camera. Let's see. Let's show you a little bit of visual representation. Mm. So, 
you can see yourselves all there. You can see there are some areas to hide behind in this kind of like ice buildup in the black paper being like the actual like ice field itself, the, the top of the lake. Um, you can see this kind of like expanse around the outskirts. Where do you want to try and hide? Oh, cool. Look at Boone. What a dope gun. It's sick. Um, can I try and go to uh, sprint like northeast to that big rock there? Like try and get like up here. Yeah, that seems good. Try and like almost like hide in like the crevice there. Okay. What are the rest of you doing? Uh, I'll also hide. Where do you want to try and go? I'm gonna try and go. Um, is it possible to go in between those two rocks or like up here. behind it? Yeah. Sure. And like yeah. on the on the other side, is it possible or? Oh no, are they? Yeah, and I'll like try and fit myself in between as much as I can. Okay. Uh, Mary Hondo Gord. Be little, she can do it. Uh, Kev, where do you want to go? Uh, I'll go behind the stone in the front. If I, those two, uh, further ahead. Like up where Brawley With Brawley? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, so to re- just to remind, so it seems like from back this direction, coming back from where you, you're coming from, it sounds like this approach of the, the spinning blades. And then where you heard, would roughly be in this area where you heard the other creature, you no longer hear anything. Hmm. Uh, oh, Mary and Gord, where are you going? Could I go? It's hard to tell from this angle the heights of some of these rocks, mm-hmm. but like slightly. You see how like southwest, of sorry southeast of where Boone is, there's like a little hole where there's like three rocks. Right. No, sorry, other direction. I guess I the camera must be facing the different way from what I was thinking. Um, towards the camera. Oh, I see. Like right here. Oh, there's like a little. Yeah, like in there's three rocks there. I'm just not sure height. Like, I mean, is there can, a thing to duck behind? Yeah, you can get low. Yep. Okay. And Gord, I'll go behind that rock in front of me too. Just like right here or right here. Uh, the first one. Yep. You got it. <clears throat> I would like everyone to make a self check. No oh boy. Jesus, I'm trash. Oh, cool. My dice is sparkly now, and it has served me well. Great. 29. <laughs> wow. Good. Uh, dirty 20. 16. I rolled absolute trash. I rolled an eight, but it's an expertise, so a 10 and a 17, 27. Jesus. I also got 27. What? Oh. For stealth? <laughs> what did you so roll? I rolled a natural 20, oh. and then my stealth is plus seven now. Hell yeah. Wow. That's pretty yeah. amazing. Yeah. Pretty good. All right. So, <clears throat> you guys pretty quickly spread out and get quiet. And uh, do your best to try and take cover where you can see fit. Mary, you for the initial, as everyone begins to spread out, you make your way towards this icy lake and you look across and like are trying to find a way to, to lay down to, to try and find a good position to put yourself in. And you kind of slip and you just kind of take cover down as you kind of tuck and roll. And you're, you're prone at this point putting yourself down, but uh, you feel still relatively safely hidden as there's no sound of the approaching large creature, but the 
of this spinning blade construct approaches and enters into the room. And Mary, you're the closest. And you can feel this of its, of its bladed legs. Like you can feel the presence, you can feel the wind as they kind of spin and turn. And it like nearly catches you, but you're just kind of tucked in enough laying down. And it just kind of skids a little bit up, but it slides on the ice. And then just makes its way back out of the space. And there's a long- The way it came? The way it came. Back one, okay. And there's a long breath, long pause. Five seconds, 10 seconds, 20 seconds, and it begins to kind of fade into the distance. However, Mary, there's a ripple in the wall that's just to the south of you. You can kind of feel this like shift, this energy kind of shift, and you are laying down and turn over to see the wall like kind of shimmer, and you watch as a figure kind of steps out. Just... You can see these heavy, large curled horns and a uh, bull face, though there's no eyes, and the skin and fur is like this heavily scarred purple texture. Muscular chest, just massively large and scarred and pulled across striated muscle of a deep minotaur. As it just <laughs> looks around the space. And you can see there's like an ethereal element to it as it kind of exits the the wall before it becomes solid. And in its hand, this like ghostly axe forms just in its hand. And it just howls this ha loud roar as another approaches through the wall across the way. And it looks down and does manage to see you, Mary. And I'm going to need everyone to roll initiative. Oh. oh. So two showed up? Damn. Oh, no. We will destroy them. <laughs> Since the guy is not prone in front of one of them. Okay, let's go. Help me. Let's not roll a four again. <laughs> oh, okay, that's actually pretty good. <clears throat> so. Do, 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 do. I'm to switch to some battle music. 25 to 20. 22. No Hondo? Uh, sorry. My face rolled. When, when Kevin doesn't roll above a 20, it's concerning. No. When Kevin doesn't gotta... say he rolls above a 20, I know he hasn't rolled yet. Yeah, it's, he's got to clear that cash on his phone. It, it never used to do this. Oh, maybe he's not about okay. Six okay. and 12, right? So 18. Wow. So you're not there yet. All right. Mary is up first. So 20 to 15 is Hondo at 18. And 16. 16. Okay. Wait, was that both my, of you? Yeah. My dex is one. What's your dex, probably? My dex? Yeah. Uh, one. Okay. Rollies? Roll a d20. Highest roll goes first. 15. Motherfucker, one. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, Brawly Boon. That uh, uh, checks your initiative back two points. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Gord, what did you roll? Nine. Okay. Nine. Uh, overall, that's actually a like, decent initiative. Pretty good. So, as things kick off... Aaron, you have first initiative, which is good because this creature just strode out of the wall, is standing atop you. Okay, well, I'm prone, so I'm going to, <laughs> on my back, kind of um, 
roll up to my feet, drawing my swords as I do, kind of barrel roll up to standing and try to maneuver myself. <laughs> Ugh, God, I guess I can't maneuver myself so I'm not pressed up against something because that's going to happen everywhere. At this point, you are unsure footing here. Yeah. So this spot is going to be kind of difficult to rain. Okay. And underneath us, is it ice underneath us or is it stone? On the edge of here, it's ice. And what about where the Minotaur is? Right where he is is kind of the transition from, from ice to stone. So he's on solid stone. Gotcha. Okay. So um, you use half your movement half to stand. Half my movement. Yep. Does he, he looks like he's about to attack. Oh yeah, he's got axe raised, coming down for a heavy slam. Great. Okay. Slam. Yeah. So as I as I kind of I'll uh, tuck and roll to get to my feet, and I'll uh, use my bonus action to activate the shield. Okay. As I do that, and pull out my swords, and uh, just kind of as I'm getting up, go for across the knees. You got it. Go ahead and make your attack. Oh my god. They speak me today. Uh, that is... Where the heck is me just being? Why did it move? There it is. That's a, only an 18. 18 misses. Yeah. Uh-oh. It's a big beef. Uh, this is a, a natural knife. So that one's going to That'll hit, yeah. Uh, third one is <laughs> a 19. A 19 just hits. Okay. A four and a five on the dice. Natural 19. Okay. Um, No one else is, I guess, who's near me? Boone is near, but not near. But it's it not within five feet, so it wouldn't No, count. he's okay. on the other side of like a piece of ice. Okay, so the two that hit. Oh, God. That's better. Thirty-three total from two hits. Okay. Uh, let's see. Thirty-three total. You got it. Uh, okay. Is you you stand up and you draw your blades and you carve through once, twice. The second you uh, you think you strike, but there's an element of the body that is still kind of this ethereal. Uh, it's still not quite fully there. And you can see there's this, this faintly like corporeal element to these creatures uh, that happen to negate one attack, uh, but you still do a good damage there. That is your action, bonus action, and half your move, are gonna stay there? Um, with the difficult terrain, mm -hmm. um, is there a way, that's half, and then I could only move what, like one more square? Yes, basically. I don't think I want to go anywhere because I don't want to put myself against that wall and I don't want to get in Boone's way. Okay. You hold your ground. Yeah. That takes us to Hondo. Hondo, you can see Mary is in combat now with the one in the south. However, from your vantage point alongside Alana, you can see another has stepped out of the wall to the north. What do you do? It's the guy with the axe, right? On yep. the north? Okay. Two big, big axe and flail. I am going to immediately create a wall of water. Okay. I would like it to be cutting him off. So from maybe from the rocks in the corner to the rocks in the middle. Okay, give me one second. I gotta find my water tops. Where do you want to put them? Uh, from the corner to the, the rock formation in the middle. Like a diagonal cutoff? 
Yeah. Oh, it's only that long? No, no, no. Kyle oh. is a bunch of different. Kyle okay. is pulling out. Yeah, awesome. You're looking to do like that kind of a cut. Perfecto. You got it. Uh, as you At summon, least you're cutting off any visual. That's good. You summon the wall of water, and you definitely do cut off visual because as soon as the water begins to kind of form and pull from the, the ice and the moisture in the air, it begins to freeze and it actually begins to slowly solidify into ice. And your wall of water is slowly becoming an ice wall. That's your action. Yeah. It's pretty dope. Uh, for my bonus, I will, I can't, can I, I do an attack for the guy on Mary or not? Not when you use your action to not make an attack as well. Okay. Well, I'll move, I'll move to the rock right in front of me. If I go around Brawley, you see that? Yeah, there. Coming to this spot? Yeah. Okay. And I will, I guess, since I can't attack, can I inspire Mary? Yes, you can. How do you try to right. inspire Mary? I will inspire Mary by saying, fight. Like you've never fought before. That's all. Yeah. That is an inspiring <laughs> call to action. Uh, Hondo, you finish your turn. You watch the wall is still slowly solidifying. You go to Brawley. Okay. Um. Oh. Oh dear. Uh. What am I doing? Um. Okay. I'm gonna use an action. Okay. Uh, I'm going to tap on the earring and um, am I able to ask Mary um, if she wants me to come over there and help her? Uh, I give that to you as a free action. You don't have to use your whole action. Yeah? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So I will ask her if she wants me to come over there and help her because I don't want to break my stealth unless because I don't want to like, get us in trouble. <laughs> so... <laughs> Can I respond now, or do I have to respond on my turn? No, yeah, you can respond. You're good. Really? Uh, well, there's a big fucker uh, trying to murder me here. Up to you. Boom's here. Where's the other fucker? That's it, because I can't see. I guess I can't see Hondo's wall from oh, where Hondo I am. over there. Okay. Uh, so then I'll be like, I'll just be like, okay, here I come. Um, I'm gonna click on rage. Bonus action. First thing rage. first. There we go. Okay. And um, can I run up to behind him? Yep. And then I'm going to hit him with my hammer. You got it. Go ahead and make okay. your attacks. Okay. Unfortunately, you don't have enough uh, enough movement to get into flanking. So okay. it's just regular attacks. You need one more space, unfortunately. It's just the way it goes. But okay. you can make your regular attacks. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, so I rolled 21 to hit. That'll hit. Uh, and that is 34 damage. Okay. Jeez. Uh, I forgot one thing. I okay. apologize. You can... Yeah, no worries. 34 damage is still going to happen. However, at the okay. end of, uh, I guess, Hondo's turn, just before we go to you, the Minotaur who was raising the axe up is going to use an action, legendary action, to strike down into Mary uh, and Ooh. finish that axe strike. Uh, Mary... That is going to be uh, a 19 to hit. Nope. Which misses. But it slams heavily into the ice as Brawley gives you that opening to jump in with the hammer and strike for 34. Okay. Uh, so second attack. Okay. Uh, oh, uh, 22 to hit. 22 hits, absolutely. And that is 21 damage. Got it. <clears throat> Second, just one, two strikes hard into the back uh, as it's trying to pull its axe free, and it finally does at the end of your strikes there. Uh, that's your action, bonus action, and your full movement. Okay. It's in your turn. Okay. Uh, let's try and do math. There we go. <clears throat> at the end of your turn, it is going to use... Uh, two legendary actions, and you watch as it kind of roars, uh, and uh, its form begins 
faintly illusory, faintly like shifting, faintly ghostly. And that's gonna end its turn. Or end its legendary action, I should say. Take us to Boone. Boone for dead. Um, do I have the movement to flank on this son of a bee with these guys? Let's see. Right there. If you get up on the ice and possibly risk falling, you could get there and flank with Ally. Otherwise, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. You could flank with uh, Mary over in this end. Yeah, I'll do that. That sounds good. We'll rush around and go ahead. Skid in the ice, twirl a glaive. The old mask pops up. It's like horn jade stuff, and I'll attack with this with this guy. Let's do it. <clears throat> Twenty-two. A Twenty-two uh, hits. Cool. Roll this. So two plus five is seven plus the radiant plus three nine. For the first one. Nine, okay. Is that with uh, both D8s? Uh, the one D10 for my damage and then the... A D8 radiant? Yeah, and the D8 radiant, yeah. Okay. Uh, the, next attack? Again, I will just say, as you as you cut down with regrets, uh, you carve through super, super, like, easily. You cut through the ethereal form, and it doesn't feel like it... It quite did as much damage as a result of it turning into this more ghostly form. No problem. And then I'm just going to keep the train going. Mm -hmm. Roll again. 24. Hit. Roll some damage. That's better. 8 plus 5 is 13. Plus the radiant is... That was D10, not that. Oh, sick. 13 plus 8 is 21. It's like close to max damage. And then I will use the bottom of the pole for one less strike with my bonus action. Uh, this one. Wow, these are really good rolls. This dice changes clutch. Uh, 28. That definitely hits. But this one's only a d4, so this is three plus five is eight. Okay. With the three strikes you do like solid damage you can see you're chipping away however again with each one you can see that it's it's still kind of drifting through this ethereal element of it uh but that is your full action bonus action and all but five feet of movement if i take a five foot step back now i want to be able to um flank so i'll just stay there okay that's good That'll end Boone's turn. Take us two Minotaur's turns. Uh, let's see. We'll start with the one who is directly in front of all of you. Uh, as it starts its turn, you watch its form uh, re-solidify, and it is no longer ethereal. Uh, and it is going to Yeah. You watch it disappear from in front of you. It just like drifts. It like turns it turns corporeal and then fully just like teleports away down the hallway here. And Boone, you just kind of catch a corner of your eye as it just roars and just <laughs> charges you and Brawley. I need you and Brawley to give me a dexterity saving throw. You got Sorry, it. A strength saving throw from both of you. You got it. Brawley plus three because of my thing. Oh, thank you. Uh, let's see. I got, wow, I got a lot. 18 plus seven, 25. That succeeds, absolutely. I got 24 for strength save. That's a success as well. Just um, hold our ground. He doesn't manage to push you. However, as it charges forward, it gets low. Uh, and to hit Boone, that is going to be a 21. Yep, hits. Uh, so it, you manage to kind of use your glaive and get it in between its horns, and it doesn't 
lift you and, and fully gore you, however, it still nicks you and push you off balance, you will suffer some damage and some extra bludgeoning damage from the like impact of the charge. Uh, that's going to be uh, 21 points of piercing damage. Okay. An additional 10 points of bludgeoning damage from the charge. Okay. Uh, Brawly, with the great axe, it is going to be able to reach across Boone and bring this heavy great axe down on you. Okay. Uh, it's going to roll an attack. It's going to be a 24 to hit you. That hits, yeah. And that is going to. Uh, 17 reduced to uh, 8 points of damage to you. Okay. Brings the great axe down and it just slashes across. Uh, the other one over there, uh, you listen to it roar and you watch as it just <clears throat> charges and shatters through the stone um, or the the, uh, the freezing wall of water that Hondo, Hondo conjured um, using one of its attacks like shatters through it so you burn one of its attacks to get through however it is going to get through and use its second swing to swing at you Hondo it's going to do so recklessly oh my Dodge it. Uh, not a great roll, but it's a 19 to hit. My AC is 19. It does hit. So it's going to swing and strike you for... Ooh, hell yeah. 21 points of slashing damage. Uh, can I dodge it? If you want to dodge it, you can use your reaction and take 10. Okay. Use your reaction, 10 points of damage to you. That is its action. Uh, and then, yeah, it's just gonna hang tight there. Uh, that's gonna end their turns. Gord, where do you? I'll turn to uh, the closest enemy behind me there. And shall cast mm? Finger of Death. Uh, an yeah. oldie but a goodie that is a con save yep coming up ooh not terrible but it's an 18 fail not enough enough for Gordo sorry are you attacking the one to the south or to the north so, so okay. this one who's already been hurt That's a uh, sixty-five. Yeah, yeah. As as he like comes back into corporeal action, reaches across and then like slams into Boone, slams into Brawley, is not paying attention to you. You can see like it's not even able to like see to where you are. So he's not focusing on you, and you just like look through your friends as it ro- rears up to roar, and you strike right between the horns, and just watch it turn to ash as it kind of falls back. Oh, Gordo. It's huge. That is your action. Do you blow your finger like... Yep. Are you going to stay there, do any uh, movement or bonus action? I'll also cast Herald of Death. Mm, Okay. Cool. You blare out and ignite in flame. What color is the flames these days? Blue. Love it. Love it's it. Intensely hot blue flames <laughs> encompasses you. And are you going to stay there? Yeah. Okay. Then that is going to end Gord's turn. At the end of Gord's turn, the Minotaur is going to use a legendary action to uh, begin to kind of shift its form and it becomes ethereal. 
Mm -hmm. and takes it to Mary. Um, let's about to hit this dude and he's gone. Uh, I can't see the other guy from where I am, I imagine. Uh, you can, you could hear and you can see over this to see him. Okay. They, they stand about 12, 10 to 12 feet tall. It's big, big boy. Yeah. Uh, 5, 10, 15, 20. Can I get there? Yeah, you can just get to there by okay. going around this way and not hitting any of the difficult terrain. All right. I'll, um, as I'm passing, uh, Boone and Alana just nod and get to guard. Nice shot. <sighs> Keep an eye out for our spinning blade friend. Seem to be attracted to a shit like this. And, um, I'll just to make my attacks as I get there to Hondo. Yep. Natural 20. There you go. First one. Second one. A uh, natural 15, so that'll hit. Yeah, absolutely. Third one is... I think it's going to just hit. Maybe it won't. I can't remember what I rolled last time. I can never remember what Mage of Spain's thing is now. Oh, yeah, that'll hit. 21. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, the natural 20... Hey, I rolled so close to max damage. Great. That's 22, so 30 points of damage on points. the natural 20. Okay. Uh, the other two, I'll just... It not doing so, quite as much damage, just given the etherealness. Mm, I'll just do the, the total of the other two together. Yep. Oh, 12, 13. Plus sixteen is thirty-one. Thirteen and sixteen. Or no, sorry, that's twenty-nine. Twenty-nine. Okay. Uh, again, same same situation. Yeah. Uh, and sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say uh, bonus action. Yeah, I'm going to use my bonus action to try to eye for detail. And just make sure there's no more, at least behind this guy, that there's no other threats. Real quick swivel. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. It's not very good. I probably didn't see anything. I rolled a four on the dice. Uh, Your perception's not bad, though. Only 11. Within 11, you don't see anything beyond this guy to the kind of along the north or along the next path. Um, however, the sound, the faintest sound of his blade construct approaching from where you saw it go before. Presumably the sounds of combat, the roaring of these creatures has drawn yep. it once more. You imagine you have another round, but you imagine the top of the next round it will be here. hope everyone's ready to fight a fucking ball of swords. I don't want to fight the ball of swords. Six. Uh, Mary, that is your action, bonus action, and movement. It's in your turn. That is everything. Okay, takes us to Hondo. I am going to... I think I'm going to try and get on that guy's back. Uh, he's a classic. Kinda, he's a little ghostly, so it's uh. going to be possibly impossible. <laughs> but... You don't know. Not sure. I'm going to okay. Well, I'll I'll I'm gonna throw whisper, and I'm gonna aim for his axe holding arm. Okay. Do you want to try and like disarm him? Like you want to try and like see if you can? It's gonna be like a very very difficult shot if you want to try and make it a point to make him drop his weapon. Yes, I would like to try that. Okay, so it's a it's a called shot. It's a high DC, and he gets a strength save to to avoid it. So, go ahead with your attack. Well, that's not great. A three roll. It's probably not going to do it. <laughs> and a 14, so 17. Unfortunately, you are, you're, you're close to him, and you just throw the 
throw Whisper, and it would hit if he wasn't this kind of incorporeal, ghostly form. It just goes through and like skitters off before reappearing back at your side. So unfortunately, a miss. That is your action as a bonus action. Uh, you know, I'm gonna because it, we're in an icy area. I'm gonna try frostbite. Okay. Go ahead and make your second attack with frostbite. So I'm just okay, and yeah. So frostbite is plus eleven, and I roll a two. Woof. So Woof. thirteen. <laughs> Unfortunately. You strike out and you just kind of carve through. Uh, and not that the etherealness affects this in this case. This one, he just actually kind of steps back ever so slightly and your blade just kind of carves through air. Unfortunately, just on unsure ground or you're not sure what, but you're just not having your best of luck right now. You gonna stay there? If I move, uh, he gets an attack block to right? It seems possible. Uh... Yeah, I'll stay there. Okay. At the end of your turn, he's going to use a legendary action to use an axe attack against Mary. Uh, I do have a question, actually. I didn't realize that Kev was in combat range. So, would sneak attack have applied? Uh, yeah. On that natural 20. <laughs> oh, yeah. Did you roll your sneak attack? I didn't include it because I didn't... I couldn't... I didn't see that he was in range, even though I should have. I just wasn't thinking about the size of the creature. Sure, go ahead and roll it. Okay. So, an extra 20 points down, because I double it, so I rolled a 10 on the dice. Damn, okay. okay. Uh, just not full damage, obviously, as I was saying. No, Still no. It's corporate yep, yep. form, but big roll. You good? Yep. Okay. Uh, he's going to make the great axe attack against you now. Mm -hmm. He's going to make it recklessly. Mm hmm. Oh, not great. Uh, I think it's only an 18 to hit. 18 nope. to hit. No dice. Shield. Uh, that is his legendary action. And Punisher and Brawley, we come to you. Brawley and Boone, being the closest here to the south, you can begin to hear that bladed creature whirring the blades up and coming from the south here. Uh, and it is moving fast. You imagine. Within a couple of seconds, it's going to be up here. What are you doing? Uh, I'm first. I'm going to. Um, should I mark him? Yeah, I'll mark him. Mark the other Minotaur. The guy in front of me. Yep. Uh, okay. Oh, he's over there. Yeah. This Who's is this is you here. This is Boone. Oh, it's That's good. Okay. Me. Um, in that case, I'm going to um, roll, and I'm going to get to cover and get out of the way. Got it. Pull yourself over the other side. You gonna do? Um, what are you gonna do with your action? Am I able to uh, grab Boone and pull him too? Yeah be your action, but you can grab hold of him and just pull yourselves both out of the way. Okay. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, you pull yourselves both out of the way, you grab him and yank him, uh, and you both are in cover here. Um, and then I'll, um, I'll just kind of tap on the earring and be like, incoming ball with blades to everyone. You got it. Uh, anything for a bonus action? Uh, I'm just gonna hold an attack and that's it. Cool. Yeah, I'm done with that. Actually, yeah, I'm done with swapping that. So, like, you could use the bonus action to grab hold of boom, pull him in, and have the hammer at the ready for anything to come through the door. Okay. That's cool. And then I'll take us to boom. You get pulled to the side. So, is the grid, the white grid, the ice on the lake? The white grid is the fog walls. Where is this icy lake? This is the kind of black construction paper, and the white um, ice is like the outskirts. So the lake is here, and this is the outskirts. Okay. Um, There's like ice build up on the edge of the lake, and then this is just like flat ice, and then these are just like normal tiles. 
Do I have any memory of how thick this ice is from when we first came in or didn't really get a good look? You guys have yet to really get a good look. You focus more on your enemies and hiding, so I'd say no. I'll turn to Bally. <laughs> Bally. I'll turn to Brawly and be like, with the spooky mask on, we lure it to the ice. And then I will like push past her and jump up on this and I want to like get onto the ice. Oh, that's a good idea. Go ahead and make a dexterity saving throw. Thirteen? Thirteen's enough. Uh, you manage to like leap down and like hold your ground using the blade of regress to kind of keep yourself steady. Uh, like kind of just like a little guide to yourself. Uh, and you're able to get to that point. It's a little difficult terrain, so that's as far on it as you can get um, with just your movement. Can I see over this, uh, like that little rock I had to hop over to see this thing? Like, do I have eyes on it from this perspective? You'd see it. You know, it's it's tall enough that it's over. Like the, the, the ice around the edge is maybe four feet tall, like three, four feet tall. So easy enough to see over it. Um, I will actually say one thing. As you land on the ice, you can feel uh, it seems relatively sturdy, but there is some shift in like, you can hear the faint creaking and cracking of the ice. Like it's not particularly thick. Uh, you're fine, but you imagine something heavier could easily break and fall through or multiple creatures could easily break and fall through this. Um, and as you kind of look down and you see some faint kind of cracking in the ice, it's mostly black and dark depths beneath, but there is a glimmer deep down. A glimmer deep down there? Yeah. Interesting. Difficult to make out what? Just kind of a glimmer that catches your eye. Um, I'll shout out towards the thing. I'll be like, come to us, you know, something like that. And then I'll take the glaive and I'm gonna slam it down into this ice. Ooh, okay. Uh, go ahead and make an attack roll. 19? Yeah, definitely. Um, roll damage. How big a crack you make here? 16 total. Yeah. Uh, you put the full blade of regret right down to like where it meets the hilt and, and kind of twist. And that crack that when you first, your impact first landed, you splinter it and you watch as like spider web cracks begin to emanate all across. The integrity here has definitely been weakened and you imagine uh, you imagine yourself falling in this should something else come along with you. Right. And I won't attack it again. I'll just like yeah, twirl the glaive and just wait for it. It's close enough to the edge. Um, cool. You have two attacks. Do you want to hold your second attack? If you'd let me, yeah. That'd be yeah. cool. Just keeping in mind, holding your attack uses your reaction. But yeah. Yeah, that's cool with me. Okay, uh, then that is the end of your turn. It takes us to the Minotaur. Minotaur becomes corporeal once more in front of Bro. Uh, I guess actually, sorry, could I, in knowing that I have that, that, what's that called? The Avenger thing, Relentless Avenger. If something comes in my space, I can hit it with an opportunity attack. I don't think that's your Relentless right. Avenger. I think it's your Polar Master. I have Relentless Avenger. When you hit a creature with an opportunity attack, you can move up to half your speed immediately after the attack. And it's part of the same reaction without provoking opportunity attacks. Mm -hmm. So if something came in my space, I could use that and move. Mm -hmm. So I won't, maybe I won't hold that extra attack. I'll just wait with that whole pole arm thing. You got it. Cool. Then that's cool. Uh, and we go back to the Minotaur. Minotaur is in front of Mary and Hondo uh, and is going to use a bonus action. This here. And you watch as it reappears, like charging through the wall. And it's going to try and charge both of you from this direction. I mean, both of you, Hondo and Mary, to make strength saving throws. We get no attacks of opportunity. No, it did. It like teleports away and then reappears as it charges through the ethereal wall. Uh, six and what was the 
Strength Great. save. Strength, Strength saving throw. Uh, plus four. Ten. Ten is a failure, unfortunately. Twenty. Twenty-three. Twenty-three is a success. So, uh, Mary, you. Oh, that is a natural twenty to hit. Ooh. Eep. Yeah, it's gonna hit. That's hopping. That is a natural sixteen to, for a twenty-six. Nope. Oh, yeah. <laughs> total is going to hit you. So, uh, Mary, you get hit for a natural 20. As it, like, I did hit it with a natural 20, so that seems fair. <laughs> That's true. It brings the great axe across as it like lowers its head, and you're just off to the side, so it just like sweeps the great axe and connects with you as it rushes with like this added speed. Uh, you suffer. Oops, that's wrong. Ooh, I love a D12. Um, I hate a D12. Uh, 37 points of slashing damage. Oof. Oof. I mean, that's about what I did to it, so that's and totally an fair. additional 10 points of bludgeoning damage as, like, just a pure charging slam. But you are 47. not... 47. You're not thrown or knocked prone as you hold your ground, still taking the blow. Hondo, however... The horn digs into your side, gets underneath your armor, and lifts you up and throws you. 18. Oh, no. Oof. 18. Can I dodge that? 32. Take 42 points of damage. Uh, it has been your turn, so you can use your reaction to uncanny dodge. Yes. So you take 21 points of damage. Okay. However, you are lifted from your feet and thrown. Standing right there, right on the precipice of falling into boon and the breaking ice uh -oh. and knocked prone. Is that is as far as that can go. And then it's gonna end the Minotaur's turn. Take us to Gord. I shall turn to him and do penance stare. Jesus, okay. Uh, it's an intelligence saving throw? Charisma. Oof, bad. I don't think there's any way he can survive this. Nope. Get him, get him. That's a zero. <laughs> Fifty-two. What does it look like to you, Gord, to pen and stare down this Minotaur? What does the effect look like to you? Just like, have you ever seen Paddington? You know, he just hard stares someone down. And they turn to ash and fire? And then, you know, in like Men in Black, when they shoot someone with a gun and they just explode into like a jelly, it's like that. <laughs> okay, it's wow. It's, it's like the most wholesome little, little <laughs> angry little bear. Wholesome but just, horrifying. Just yeah. turns him. I mean, it would make fitting sense to turn him into a little puddle of marmalade. Uh, and you do so. You obliterate what's left of the Minotaur with your pen and stare as this creature is definitely evil, a dark soul, broken and tormented it may be, but certainly here. You've put it to rest. That's your action. You have a bonus action in any movement you want to use. You can certainly hear the spinning ball of death approaching from the south. I think I'm good. Okay. You hold there. Uh, and we do come to Mary. Uh, okay. This thing just uh, dissolved into a weird orange goo. Which I don't love. I can see what Boone's trying to do. 
over there in terms of I like the thought of trying to drag or direct this uh, ball of blades into something that might sink it. Can I get up on top of that big ass piece of ice on the north end? Mm -hmm. I just want a good shot and maybe like, so if it came in, it's also just a bunch of people in that direction. Um, Scott, would you say Boone is like still going at it at this ice or like, was that like a one-time hit? Like, how was that flavored? He smashed it, felt like, oh, another smash is really going to do it. So now he's like prepped his glaive for like this thing Bert. to come towards him. He's like trying gotcha. to coax it at him. Cool. Um, fuck, what should I do with my action? I'm going to hold, oh God, it's not going to matter though. Raleigh's holding an action or an attack. I know, but my held attack oh, is you're just up there. normal is normal arrows, and I feel like that's not going to do shit against like a spinning blade thing. Um, how fast can this thing move? Five, ten? No, I, I, I use too much movement to get up there. Could I use my action to get Hondo on his fucking feet? Hmm, great one. Yeah, just, just so that he's not going to like slide in. We both just got fucking smashed by this big ass mentor, so I'll jump up there and haul him to his feet and say, "All right, let's let's sink this asshole." And um, uh, do I think I'll do my bonus action for? I don't think so, honestly. Um, disengage, hide. No, I, I'll think I'll just stay there and wait. Okay. Uh, at the end of your turn, the sound of the blades on the stone grows louder and louder, and indeed you watch as the spinning ball of death rolls through the fog and into the room. This is my Scalagar mini. So not like. <clears throat> as it rolls in. Boone called out, but it wasn't quite in the room yet. However, the group of you has amassed in that direction nonetheless. Um, it is going to... It's just going to roll forward. Uh, Alana, you can unleash your held attack if you wish. I will do that. Uh, that's 20 to hit. A 20 hits. Sweet. OK. Uh, 30 damage. Yeah. You watch as it is. It just held, held at the at the ready, and just as it rolls in, you throw the hammer, and it collides, and there's a big, heavy clang before the hammer returns to you, and you can see a dent in one of its rounded plates. Uh, and yeah, it was a, that was a solid hit. And as you draw its attention, it definitely goes this direction. Okay. And just can't move quite far enough get into the ice this round, but it is in that direction. Boone, it is in range for you to hit with an opportunity attack. Okay, I'll do it, yeah. Uh, and as it gets into this space, it is within range of hitting Mary. Ooh, I only got a 17. 17 is not going to hit, unfortunately. Okay. Uh, you just clang against the, the armor plates. You do connect, but it just kind of glances below. Glances, it's a glancing blow, sorry. Uh, it is going to make one blade attack against Elena, Boone, and Hondo, and a spear shot at Mary. Which are all standing there. Actually, no. Spear shot at Gord, who's standing in the background. So, three blade attacks coming up. Uh, 
that is going to be, oh yeah, that is going to be a 28 against Boom, a 26 against Alana, and a 22 yep. against Honda. Yep. Good. Yes to all. He eats that. Do that, girl. Four. 19 points of damage to all three of you. Uh, Alana, you take nine. Okay. And Gord, you watch as out of the back, one of these bladed spears fires towards you, which is a natural 20 to hit. Oh, fuck. Just tight. Gord, I actually know you don't uh, make a save for that. What happens. Gord, you take 19 points of piercing damage as the spear pierces you into the wall and you're basically pinned against the ice uh, here and you're restrained technically to use an action Jesus. to break free. That's gonna end its turn. Take us to Hondo. Uh, just wanted to check, are any, have any of these attacks been like cold damage? Nothing cold, no. Okay. Um, okay. If I disengage it, will it, and then I move, will it follow me? Uh, it's possible. If you use your bonus action to disengage, it won't get an attack of opportunity at you. However, if you use your action to try and intimidate it into following you and try and goad it, I, I can see that happening. Okay, I will do that. Okay. So use your bonus action, you disengage in your action. How do you try and goad this thing? I'm going to be like... Eight legs, look at here. Spare one for me. Are you gonna stay up there or are you gonna move? I'm gonna move. I'm gonna, gonna run. Move? I'm gonna run to the other side of the lake. Yeah, saving yourself the attack opportunity. Actually, you can't quite make it all the way across. Get halfway because it is difficult terrain. Mm hmm. So you get halfway across. Okay. Pardon me, with your full move. Using your bonus action to disengage. Your action, you go to it. So go ahead and make an intimidation check. Okay. 19 plus. Nice. Yeah. Eight, 27. Oof. You watch as you move. Our boy age. It's like it's it's the legs that are on top, the four blades, like rear rear back, and they like rear back to strike, and you watch as like steam just think <laughs> from like four open sockets. Um, you can see you've definitely somehow angered this construct. Yes. That's the end of Hondo's turn. Brawly, we come back to you. Uh okay. Um we're trying to get it in the lake. Can I um, also, like, would I be able to make it to the other side of the lake or near Hondo? You'd be able to, uh, if you use your action to dash, Yeah. you could get, not quite, you could just get just past Hondo, not quite all the way across. Okay. Um, so I'll, I'll mark the ball. <laughs> okay. Excellent. Okay. So I'll use unwavering mark, and then I'll go and move on to the ice to get it to come and get me. Got it. So, uh, are you going to try and basically do the same thing, try and go it off the ice? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so it would be your action to try and go it, or you, uh, or your action to dash. Your choice. Um, I'll do da action to dash. Okay. So getting up basically beside Hondo. You kind of double up on Hondo. It's like, come get us. But you know, just, you're just not actively doing or saying anything. Yeah. Uh, but you're being alongside him to add to the effect. Uh, action, that's your movement. Uh, anything for a bonus or is your mark a bonus? Nope, my uh, my mark's a bonus. Okay. Uh, and does that give it disadvantage on? It gives, uh... A marked creature has disadvantage on any attack roll that doesn't target me. Okay. Uh, it is going to target you with an attack opportunity as you run away from it. Okay. It's going to make a, a blade attack at you. 
Hey, you get to keep your rage. And I get yeah. to keep my rage. <laughs> uh, <laughs> your attack. 20 to hit. Okay. Which I believe hits. Yeah. Or 20 points of slashing damage reduced to 10. Okay. Uh, okay, that is Alana's action, bonus action movement. Takes us to boom. Uh, so this bad girl's just sitting there. So um, as, yep. before, as you start your turn with this guy directly in front of you and Hondo and, and Alana joining into your idea mm-hmm. of bringing it onto the ice, you can see where they've sprinted across. Those cracks you began have begun to splinter in their direction. The integrity of this ice has been severely compromised by being now three of your party on top of it <laughs> and your attack into it. Um, so if this creature gets on top of here, it's going to collapse. Mm-hmm. What do you do? I, I think I want to try and... Um, could I try and like scale up to where Mary is? Mm-hmm. Uh, you will, I, I guess it is a tech action already, so... Yeah. It uses your full move because of difficult terrain. To get up there. This is Perfect. Okay. Go. Before I ran, I'll have done the uh, bless action. Take these like pieces of jade, jagged pieces of jade. Just like touch one to myself. They kind of like float out to Hondo and Brawly. So we're blessed. So that's out of D4 to attacks and saves. All right. And then, yeah, I'll sprint towards that. Use the glaive, kind of like stick in the ice and like heave myself up next to Mary. I know we have blessed markers in here somewhere. I guess he already used his reaction, or does he have more? Uh, nope, he used only the one reaction according to this. Awesome. I thought he had more, but he does not. Um, uh, actually, sorry, there's one thing that happens though. As you start your turn within five feet of him, uh, and this happened for Barali as well, as you started yep. your turn within five feet, the blades that are all about him, uh, eight points of slashing damage, Barali, you take four. Beat pause. We can cut out of here. I don't know if you just saw the chat. Uh, Leah's gonna go get Nate. Just, just check on Nate. I just okay. heard him. <laughs> <laughs> so she's just gonna go calm him down. Okay. Uh, we can take a second here. Boom. Yeah, sorry. What did I get for damage there? Eight points. Eight? No problem. Um, I don't think I really got anything for bonus, so I think I'll just, oh, I love that you can actually just look up my bonus action now. Um, yeah, I'll just end my turn. That sounds good. Yeah, it takes us to Gord. Gord, blue flames flickering across his body. Dusted one guy. Good another. What do you got for us this turn? And when in doubt, Eldritch Blast? It's always fun. Gord, are you here? Yeah. <laughs> okay, great. What are you doing? There's no telling me there. Um, don't I have to do an action to get a stuck or something? Uh, you were you're restrained by this like uh, mm. by the the spear that's impaling you, but you can still do like you can still cast your spells and just remain oh, okay. restrained. If you want to free yourself, it's an action to pull yourself free. I shall do disintegrate. Goddamn! God. Bringing out Busting all the out guns. all the shit. <laughs> Warlocks, baby. Okay, that is a dexterity save. Yup. Okay, coming up. This guy is not particularly fast. Mm-hmm. So let's just see. It is a natural twenty. Ooh. But for Fail. Me, but what was that? For a total of 21. 
Fail. What's your save? 22? 22. Oh Two. my god. Craziness. Eighty-two. Jesus. <laughs> uh, yeah, Gord, as you unleash from the from your your stuck position, you just raise the hand that is not pinned, and you just bring this energy, this element that pockmarks the front, the, the back, I should say, that pockmarks the back, like it's it's slowly corroding away with weather and time. It's rust is, a, is accumulating. It's back legs and upper arms just become completely corroded until it's withering away. Yikes. That's your action. It's <laughs> still standing, but you can see it's like back half is like falling off. Pretty good. You can't move, so unless there's anything for a bonus action, that would end your turn. I'm good. Okay. As we come to Mary's turn, Mary's just gonna hold the dodge action just to see how mm -hmm. this situation plays out as the ice is slowly cracking. And that's all she's gonna do is just hold and wait. As it comes to its turn, goaded by Hondo with the initial cracks put in the ice by Boone and Alana to come and join the gear constructs. <laughs> Forward march slams right into the space that Boone had previously cracked and immediately <laughs> the ice breaks. Hondo, Alana, and this construct begin to plummet into frigid, frigid water. You can immediately both feel the water is is like you can feel almost frost beginning to build up on your armor pieces and on your blades and even honda who you are naturally resistant this is rough and ali who you are uh your your anger is carrying you through prolonged exposure in here is not going to be good as this contract just quickly begins to sink you watch it go down and you can just faintly see the glimmer of something, maybe 40, 50, 60 feet down. Something to investigate next time. Oh, shit. Yeah, we didn't think about you guys getting sucked in with it. That's, uh, that's going to be interesting. You may, get it. you may get it. No, you get it. You can swim. You'll figure it I out. Good. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. Join us next time as the Wildcards prove their worth and gain audience with the Lady of Pain, for better or worse. There will be a new episode up every Tuesday, so stay tuned. But until then, keep exploring.